Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Let me tell you something. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got a special, special, special guest. Oh, yeah. Mr. Alfonso Rawls. Give one with more. Us. Oh, wow. One more? One more. Raj, you're going to mess up my whole thing. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've narrowed it down to three. And now we're going to do four and then a lot of special guests. There you go. Look How about Roger gives him the one next time? Roger can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> special <laughs> guests. Okay, there it is. Alfonso Rawls, man. Thanks, for, dude. Thanks so much for coming, dude. Thanks for having me. All the way from uh, Oceanside. That's right. You didn't grow up there, though. Did for you? The, uh, for the most part, yeah. You North, did? North County. San okay. Diego, yeah. Oh. I mean, in between Oceanside, Carlsbad, Vista. Yeah. Yeah, North County. You weren't born here, though. We were talking before the show. That's right. I was born in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, Bangkok, oh, really? Coincidentally enough, as from what my mom tells me, uh huh, there was only one Air Force base or one uh, military base in mm. Bangkok at the time, and um, I think I might have been born in the same hospital as Eric Costin. Eric oh, wow. Costin. Which, <laughs> which, ironically, when I first moved out, that's who I moved in with was Eric Costin. We lived in... Some apartments in uh, Oceanside. Did you ever talk to him about the? Well, yeah, that's that's kind of how we kind of came to the conclusion. We had the discussion, oh. you know, because he was born in Bangkok as well. Right. And his yeah. father was in the military. Yep. And I was telling my mom about it, whatever, and she said, "Well, you guys might be born in the same hospital wow. because there was only one military base, military hospital, okay, in Bangkok at the time." Are you around the same age as Eric? I'm not sure how old Eric is, hmm. but uh, I think I'm like five years older than Eric. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, maybe three, three, three. I was going to say you may, you may have been, you know, neighbors in the ho- in the hospital. Yep. Split at birth. Same, like uh, one incubator, Twins, one incubator away. I don't know what they they're called that they put the babies in. You know, yeah. they look through the window, they wave to right. the babies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, though. So, what do I, you were born out there? What, and then, what age did you move to the states? So, I was born out there. My father had passed away mm. one day after my first birthday. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. And um, we had moved to Okinawa, Japan, at that point because my aunt was living in Okinawa, Japan. She had met a military man that was a friend of my father's at the time. So mm. at that point, we had uh, moved to Okinawa. We stayed there for a while and then um, basically moved to Oceanside. From, after that straight point. from Okinawa? Yeah, yeah straight from Okinawa. Oh, because Bangkok, I had, Okinawa, right, Oceanside. My mother had a friend from Thailand that was also living out in Oceanside at the time, and so we went to visit them. And it was also kind of a a, uh, a, a, a wish from my father at the time that she had moved the kids to the U.S. to give us some kind of opportunities because there was okay. really no op- opportunities out in you sure. know, uh, Thailand. Right, okay. For me, pretty much at North County, San Diego for most of my life. And what age did you say you were at uh, in San Diego? Or no, moved to Oceanside? Four Four years Four, old. Yeah. So you must, you must have grew up, I mean, seeing skating and seeing stuff around, right? I mean, it was kind of... Well, shoot, not back then. I'm, no? I mean... They went to him in California. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, in California, in Oceanside. Weren't yeah. there a bunch of skaters down there when you were growing up? When I was growing up, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean you know, I, I started skateboarding in 84, 85. 84. And, uh, and, but how did you get into it then? So I got into it the summer of 84, 85. My, uh, my recollection election of time frames and stuff isn't always accurate, but I think it was 84, 85. The summer going into the fifth grade. When did the space shuttle blow up? Of oh, the Challenger? 85? Yeah. So, okay, so it was summer of 85. I was uh, playing basketball mm-hmm. at a local elementary school campus that I attended called Libby okay. Elementary. Playing basketball, and then three dudes come rolling up on skateboards doing four-wheel slides and oh, ollies yeah. and stuff. And just like, you know, j- just just like the story goes, you know, from, from most pe- people that you hear of sure. when they first start skating, when the first time you see someone doing ollie or four-wheel slides or something like that, you're kind of intrigued, and it kind of stops you in your tracks. So right. same thing happened there. And um, so it stopped us in our tracks, me and my buddies that I was playing basketball with, and uh, it turned out that one of the guys was Adrian Domain, one of the ex-Bones Brigade vert riders at mm-hmm. the time. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and uh, he lived, I think, maybe two or three houses down from the elementary schoolyard. And uh, and so after watching him for a while, I had asked Adrian if I could borrow his board, and he let me you know, ride his board. Okay. Fell in love with it. How old were you about? So that was, 
what some are going to uh, probably like 13 13 yeah. okay yeah. i mean 12, you're pretty 12, tall 13. you could have done the whole basketball thing, <laughs> yeah. no, that, that wasn't that wasn't interesting no, you wasn't know what a... i've always been intrigued by all things kind of creative you know yeah. what i mean and, and it seemed like I, I was into soccer at first because that's, all, that's oh, yeah. what all my buddies were doing but i mean that was the only team sport that i was really kind of hmm into basketball yeah. can be creative though when you're you know you're running the but <laughs> i mean you, like no horse? seriously i'm huh when you're playing horse no i'm just saying you 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 know your you point guard is is creating plays the guy who's scoring is creating his shot you know right no i get it i i, I think i think i was more drawn to just the free spirited nature of skateboarding it was something that you can kind of yeah you do whatever do you want your, do yeah. what you want you yeah, know yeah, right? yeah. especially at the time i started skateboarding there's just still so much to be able to do sure you know what i mean sure. there's still so many different ways in which to be creative did you ever get into surfing or anything when at a young no age? oddly enough living close to the beach living in san diego my whole life never that never interested me yeah. huh. I never really was a fan of cold fucking salt water See, I'm, the same. <laughs> I'm the same i grew up near the water too mm -hmm. and i was never i never got into it no i'd love Just, to see you in a wetsuit by oh the way. my god <laughs> Please. I did. I mean, I'm thinking about like sharks and stuff like right. uh, there's it not just, really much meat on my bones but yeah. I, I mean you know cold it's uncomfortable like, like so, I mean hey much respect to surfers and sure, stuff out there but sure. that's just never you know I, like if, if if I didn't have warm water I would never take a shower probably like, <laughs> I, I, I don't <laughs> right, like cold right. water yeah. you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> so you got into skating would you say thir uh, about 12, 12 13. 13? And then what did your uh, family buy you a board? After seeing Adrian Demain and those guys mm -hmm. uh, at, at the schoolyard cruising around, it was my... I mean, those dudes must have been ripping. Yeah, for the time. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, up until that point, skateboarding to me existed in my mind as kind of like the same thing as a pogo stick or kind of yo-yo or just whatever. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like sure. little skinny skateboards or whatever. And so until I saw a skateboard used in that way... right. That's what it was to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once I saw that, I was just like, you know, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. Right. Outside of that, I didn't know anything else about skateboards. So I used to sell at the swap meet when I was younger, like all, on the weekends with uh -huh. my with my um, with my mom, and she used to get like wholesale goods up in uh, downtown LA, like you mm -hmm. know, little knickknacks and what have you. Okay. And. Um, so on the weekends when we'd sell at the swap meet, I'd go hunting around for skateboard parts oh. and was able to find a skateboard hanger and then a base plate. And at, <laughs> you know, at, at, at a certain point, I'd accumulated. Frankie board. Yep, exactly yeah. that. Like, you know, different brand, like venture pendants. You know, no <laughs> way. I, no, there, it wasn't venture. even pendants. <laughs> it was, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. no, it, at that point, it wasn't like any good quality equipment at that point. It was just random bits and pieces that missed and matched and whatever and yeah, but it still worked though it still got uh, you i mean kind of sort of i mean i ended up getting some wheels that i think were kind of roller skate wheels mm -hmm. the trucks were different from front to back sure. and i couldn't find a skateboard deck so i ended up cutting one out my neighbor across the street <laughs> wow. um end up cutting one out of a piece plywood. of plywood yeah so i had i had the board with no kicktail or whatever so that lasts all about a week it's sure still, you know what i mean with no kicktail oh, your, yeah. your tail is going to snap pretty quick but yeah Plywood um, flexible as hell as I yeah, right, I know. right. And right. so it was, it was like a thick piece of plywood. But hey, we made. It, I had a skateboard. You know, yeah, I mean? there you go. Like, I mean, it, when you didn't know better, and in you know, anything with four wheels that allowed you to roll was was awesome. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I uh, finally got that. That broke really quick. Tried to beg my mother to buy me a board at that point. Um, and uh, I mean, skateboard. The whole complete was like 120, 130. Sure. Yeah. He wasn't having that shit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just said, but but I find, the price is still the same. But yeah, so, I mean, find some more plywood. When did you start skating? I started in like 85. 85. Yeah. So you remember that um, that Christmas of 85, 86, whatever, when every, like, every, like it was one, there was one Christmas when like a lot of my friends started skateboarding and everyone got ex or kamikaze boards. Okay. I thought you were and, gonna say executioners. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was it was yeah. right on par, par with mm, the executioners yeah. and you know uh, fly me flamingos and all those you know whatever Volterra and all that yeah. Volterra and all that stuff. I end up getting a kamikaze board that um, my mom bought at the Price Club, which is now Costco. Okay. And I think that whole setup was, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was like either 25 or 35 bucks, and it was like the closest thing to a real board at that time because a lot of those other boards that were at. Uh, wasn't even Target at the point. I think it might have been Gemco. 
the wheels were kind of plasticky. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm. So it was gotcha. you know you didn't really get the same Barely ride. Rolled, so, yeah. Right. And so I was super stoked. I got a kamikaze. I mean, that was the best that we can do at that point. Mm. And so, uh, you know, I rode that to the death. And um, from there, I had saved up lunch money to get a Neil Blender. And I was running my Neil Blender with my kamikaze trucks and wheels, like, for a hot minute. Oh, wow. Really? I think, yeah. So I think I, 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 had, I had the... Were you I had not a, eating lunch? No, 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 I was, I was eating all my friends lunch. Like seriously, I was, saving I, I had, money. yeah, my objective was to save up for a board. So, I mean, I'll, I'll go without lunch. I'll eat my friend's lunch or whatever, but I was running the, uh, kamikaze wheels and trucks with my Neil blender. And, um, the funny thing about that is I don't know if you remember what kamikaze's that board looked like, but the wheels were kind of like mini cubics. Like they're pretty, they're pretty Fat wide. And sweet, yeah, yeah. Right. And then, so the Neil blender board if you remember the shape of it, the tail kind of at the it waist kind of tapered in. Yeah, and fished it So up. it looked yeah. super fucking funny to have <laughs> like a, a board that, yeah, it completely. It wasn't oh, your truck, where your, your wheels were right. sticking out of the hole. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. But I mean, you know. It, I, it worked. It worked. It absolutely worked. Were you worked. doing tricks and were you learning sh- stuff on that yeah. board? Or? Yeah, I was, I was learning tricks. Okay. Uh, you know, there was some local skateboarders in my neighborhood at the time who had built a quarter pipe at the end of uh, one of the cul-de-sacs and mm. it worked perfectly well for that doing kick go. turns okay. and little yeah. you know yeah. you know, sc- scraping the scraping the no this no. was like an eight foot quarter pipe at the time okay. so you know i was just trying to see how high i can go up and do fake <laughs> sure, keys sure. and you know what i mean and you know kick turns and ollies stuff like that. no so ollies yet at that point trying was to... i doing ollies i think so yeah I kind of, I, I think within a year or two, I, I was progressing pretty and This thing had this, did quick. it have the skid plate on it or and all that stuff or? The oh, kamikaze, the, the yeah, kamikaze the, did. I think did the kam- okay. Do you remember? Is that a, the, the kam- I, I, I'm, I'm always referring to no, Raj. No, no, no. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he, I'm going to be referring to, to sure. Raj because he's from, that was he's from my board, era. Right? No, the kamikaze was its was own. It, it was kamikaze. Yeah. That was it. It huh. was the white board with the, okay. So the kamikaze was a, a white board. With the rising sun and it gradiated from like red to yellow, mm-hmm. and it said kamikaze in black letters. I'm just picturing yeah. with the, the the big fat skid plate and the right. and the nose guard and all I mean, that. Most of those boards you bought it like, you know. I think it had, the you know, big box stores, whatever, had all that shit. Yeah, that's it had it, all that stuff he, in there. I think so. I, you got it. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, stores, though, I'm yeah. trying to remember because I think I might have removed the 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 skid plate and okay. left the rails. Right. But I think it might have had all that stuff on there, mm. minus the culprits. It had the tail mm-hmm. and the rails and the uh, nose guard. The lapper. Did it have the lapper? I don't. <laughs> it might have had. No, I don't think it had the lapper. There's no way it could have the lapper for fucking thirty five bucks. But it, I mean, I was. I mean, now when I think about, it, I was blown away that it's thirty five dollar board because I mean it wasn't. Yeah. You know, the best equipment, but I mean it wasn't too far off. I mean, really. Right. Right. I mean, not that I remember. I mean, outside of the shapes, kind of probably being. You know. You know what's funny is like kids from our generation, like we got into skating because of some shitty board you bought it like target or whatever else mm-hmm. right and now kids are like talking shit on like dark star R- yeah for like trying to like create a board that people can actually go skate right mm-hmm. you know, right right for cheap kids are picky these days yeah. man man i'm telling Spoiled. you bro so you were so the eight there was eight foot quarter pipe and so you were progressing i was progressing i mean it was it was everything that's i mean you it, got it your, was that's where you got your tranny skills man that's oh, right so that's right from straight from the cul-de-sac well we yeah dude we lived it i mean we studied the magazines yeah, yeah, you, remember, yeah. you remember magazines um, <laughs> remember magazines? yeah i remember no, those I, yeah. paper with the yeah you yeah. flipped them around yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. men's journal Read them. right yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so yeah i mean you know i immersed myself in it i mean it was it was you know at that age skateboarding wasn't just something that i did it allowed me something to be you know what i mean it, yeah. it gave me something to be you know what right. I mean? it gave me a culture to kind of uh, uh, attach to and um I immersed myself in it and before too long we were uh just like you know just like a lot of kids from that era it's like we were stealing wood okay. from construction sites <laughs> right you know there wasn't cameras and you know sure. all that sophistication but i mean mm-hmm. we're you were young kids no driver's license and nothing like this so it's like in the middle of the night, like skating down the street with big sheets of plywood and two by fours and stuff, we managed to steal enough wood to make a, it was probably a six, seven foot uh, mini ramp that was kind of next to my, uh, that was in an a- empty field at the time. There's oh. many neighborhoods are built on it at this point. Yeah. Okay. But we built a full blown, you know, six foot quarter pipe. Adrian Domain used to skate it all the time. And, um, I mean, it must've been thousands and thousands of dollars worth of wood, but um, <laughs> right. yeah, no shit. Like, and, and, you know, pretty looking back on it, pretty amazing feat considering none of us drove. We're like, we're, you know, stealing wood from like 
a couple few miles away, all on skateboards, you know, in the middle of the street. Like, wow. what the fuck did we look like fucking in the middle oh, yeah. of the big sheets yeah, of right? But, I mean, we pulled it off. The ramp never really got fully completed. Okay. Angle, iron, We had angle iron coping and shit like that. That's when uh, ramps... Ramp transitions weren't cut out of plywood yet. It was, you know, the two by four, like yep. this, then like this, and then like, you know, I mean, like in, on, on the yeah. levels and kind of gradiated you oh, know, down. Gotcha. And so, you know, tons of kids. Super tons, janky. Yeah. Tons, yeah, super janky. But I mean, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't know any better at that right, point. Right. It, was, it was somewhere to skate. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's, yeah, that, that's kind of a big part of where my tranny Ooh. skills kind of started. How long did uh, that ramp last? I can, I can imagine it. Man, it, it lasted for about, I mean, I can't really remember. If I had to guess it, I mean probably nine months or so i'm okay. thinking okay and then um one of the skaters in the neighborhood was hooked on some kind of drugs heroin or something whatever mm. and fucking flipped out one day and took a sledgehammer to the ramp and just destroyed you know, no destroyed way. the ramp what and the yeah f- so we were bummed i was wow. crying damn and, you know, I mean, dude it's like i you know whatever damn. But, remember yeah. his name i don't no <laughs> No, but I, yeah, he was, I think it might've been heroin or something oh, crazy wow. or whatever, but he used to always just kind of flip out free, but he was a skater too. I mean, yeah. So he just, he really kind of flipped out. Well, not in his right mind, you know? Yeah, exactly that. that. That's a shame. But then after that ramp went away, uh, a buddy of mine, like literally uh, two blocks away, um, Paul Lopez, uh, built, uh, like a nine footer, nine foot oh. ramp in his backyard. Hmm. But I don't think that even got finished either. Um, what happened there was they were building the ramp. The ramp was halfway done. And um, one of the guys were skating it. And I was there kind of helping. That, well, see, they, 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 were, they were building it and it wasn't done. But mm-hmm. um, part of it was plied and then the other part was ribbed out. And so I thought it was a bright idea to stick my head through the ribs or whatever while one of the dudes was skating. <laughs> and the uh, Rob, Rob Scott board with the sharp tail kind of flung up and hit me on my cheek. And so that's not really a... Oh, that's oh, what that is? Oh, yeah. no oh, way. No. Yeah. It messed the muscle up. Yeah, yeah. So it I, hit the muscle. I can still feel. Yeah, you can still see it. Oh, you can still see yeah. it, yeah. I can feel the scar from the other side. It went no all way. the way through. All the way through. You had a hole like, in your cheek. You had a hole in my cheek. What? Went home. My mom was flipping out. Oh, and my And so God. I, think, I, I, I think at that point, Paul's mom like kind of made him tear it down. Tear it so down. I think I kind of might have. You know what? I don't. Did it? I don't remember if it fully got finished or whatever, but I mean, if it did, it didn't stick around for that okay. long. Okay. Huh. But I, I, yeah, I, I think that that really kind of sketched the parents out because they thought I would, I would sue or something or yeah. whatever. And so, right. you know, it, well, it, is, it, this, it, is, is this, I'm trying to picture where you're sticking your head at. Is it on the deck or is it in the... In the transitions. So imagine if you're like poking your head through the, the ribs of, of, a, of, of a ramp when you got one side plied and then one side not plied. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And then the guy lost, you know, control and just... Perfect aim, boom, oh, right into my cheek. <laughs> and you were oh, Rob Roscott board. I'll never, I'll never forget. Did you ever skate a Roscott board after that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, never. No. I mean, to be honest though, it's 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 kind of cool that it, it's kind of cool that it's a part of your just like skateboarding is part of your face. Now. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just part of skateboarding. Yeah. 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 yeah, skate face. <laughs> yeah. Glad you're okay, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems like backyard ramps really don't last too long. It seems like the no. neighborhood wants right. it down, or the. I can't you imagine know. like. Every home here in California is like six feet apart from one another. Right. It's right. impossible right. to have oh, a yeah. right back yeah. right. The noise, especially, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. in the middle of nowhere. It, it, yeah. yeah, and especially back in those days with, you know, backyard ramps definitely didn't have masonite. And yeah. no one was soundproofing them. Right, yeah. So, I mean, you're hearing right. every grain of the fly, which. Oh, I mean, so, yeah, ramps would never last that long. Were you like street skating at all back then? We just skateboarded back then. I mean, we never really categorized it. You uh, know what I mean? Yeah. It was kind of like pre quote unquote street skating. And you know what I mean? It was, uh, they were going to like get your wood. generation yeah. could skate anything. Yeah. What's that? Like your generation could skate anything. Yeah. We yeah. just, we just, like we just ramps, skated. Free, anything. You skated anything yeah. that was in front of you we pretty just, much? We were skateboarders. We didn't know how to delineate what was what. We just skated. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. I and mean? it was until later that we heard about the, you know, Gonzes and Nautices and, you know, GSD. Like GSD had, had the first like official like street street board that was different yeah. than what you know normal uh, regular skateboards were you know what i mean that they kind of classified that as a street board yeah. huh go skate day yeah. had boards <laughs> gsd oh gary oh yeah for the <laughs> young <laughs> yeah. let me clarify yeah, yeah gary gary scott davis uh one of the original like street skateboarders back in back in the day with okay. you know gons and Nottis and back in that area oh, or, yeah. you know mid mid uh late 80s yeah. tracker was it a big company yeah. gsd 
No, GSD was that was his name. Gary Gary Scott Gary Skate Davis is what they would call. Oh, Gary Skate Davis. And the board company was Tracker when Tracker was making boards. Remember Tracker was making like Kasai boards or you know whatever. Yeah, like a fish on the board, right? Was that? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think board. that was okay. That was one of the boards, yeah. but the original one was in was an eyeball, if okay. I'm not mistaken. And then what do you like? You, you start getting better. I mean, what what about your first sponsor? Like, so skate shop. My first, yeah. I mean, yeah. Were you I, I filming guess, back I, then too? I no. mean, I mean, I think my mom might have had a generic video camera. We might have dabbled around, okay. you know, a little bit. But did you even know what, you know, sponsorship was, or or was it was it so out of reach for you? You know. Or did you already have your eye on it? Were you like, you well, know what, I, this is what I want to do. I see all these guys not, in the magazines. Like, I want to kind of... I guess not so much. I mean, you know, I was familiar with skateboarding on that level because we had, uh, you know, like I said, um, Adrian Domain basically introduced me and my crew or whatever to skateboarding. And since mm-hmm. he rode for Powell, he, you know, uh, he, he was kind of real informative in, okay. in, in, in regards to what skateboard culture was and... The first video that I saw was the Bones Brigade video show, and it was because mm. um, Adrian had let uh, let us borrow the video. Oh, there you go. And um, yeah, so I was familiar with it from that aspect, and started picking up the magazines and stuff like that. But okay. uh, as far as getting sponsored and stuff like that, I guess yeah, it kind of is in the back of your mind. Yeah. But I was just kind of enjoying skateboarding and being creative and just you know being a part of the culture. It's also, you're with this guy that skates for Powell. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. it's kind of in your click. Right. You know, you're right. just like, oh, this is maybe obtainable. Yeah, I mean, I, I I guess quite naturally that's every that that's something that we all had kind of aspired to be like sure, to some degree. Sure, sure, but sure. I mean, our focus was basically just to skate, skate and have yeah. fun and you know see how good we get and see how you know how many new different tricks that we can do. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. So what was your first sponsor? So my first like legit sponsor was Eight Street Skateboards. That was and your first sponsor. 8th so that Street. was that was, my, that was my first sponsor. Before that, I was supposed to get on Dogtown via um, oh. via. Uh, Paul De Asus, which I think is Rudy Johnson's uh, um, Rudy Johnson's wife's brother. Okay, oh, I guess interesting. Um, but that never ended up happening. Well, I actually, I, I guess I was supposed to be on, but I didn't feel like I was on. I never received any boards and stuff like that, so things kind of weren't happening. So I figured, hmm. okay, that's just really, you know, if this is what it's like, then I can probably do without it. But sure. I was <laughs> yeah, but, not, not, not really getting even, anything yeah. out of this, <laughs> right? right. And so, but before that, it's like, you know, obviously, you know, growing up uh, skateboarding and being introduced through, to skateboarding through age and domain, mm-hmm. I was a Powell kid. Sure. And um, I really wanted to skate for Powell. And years, a, a year or two before McGill's skate park opened, mm-hmm. he'd have these contest series at the YMCA and I would enter those and do pretty good. Oh. On it. And so I was kind of establishing a little local name for myself. Okay. Skateboarding. So... So much so that um, uh, McGill, Mike McGill, was going to get me on Powell, and apparently every you know everybody was on board with it. And the next step was that Stacy Prolta was supposed to come to McGill's park and come check me out and film me and all this stuff. So I mean, fucking as a wow. kid, I'm just elated, just sure. super excited. And he was supposed to come, didn't come. Wow. Didn't show up. <laughs> next, yeah, and then then the next weekend he was supposed to come, didn't come. And then it kind of kept on getting strung along that at, oh, at a certain no. point, I was already been skating a lot with Danny Way. And Danny Way was like, oh, well, why don't you just get on 8th Street? I'm like, well, is, that's an option? Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, let's do it. You know, and, and, and um, so I end up I end up getting on 8th Street uh, the day after Hocus Pocus premiered. The actually. day yeah. after? The day after Hocus Pocus premiered. Uh, so if you, if you, you... You have footage in there. I Well, I have I have a shot in there. And my shot is... You're talking Shackle Me Not or Hocus? No, Shackle Me Not. Right. I, I had a shot... Well, it wasn't. It wasn't a trick. If you, if you remember uh, on Shackle Me Not, Mag Tony Magnuson fell doing a rock and roll fakie on a four foot uh, 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 ramp at McGill's Park. Yeah. And um, I'm in the background doing a 540 over the spine. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, that was my introduction. No, wait, there was that. Was that timed or was that just happenstance? Just like you happened. just, it oh, just really? Happened. Okay. Yeah. You did 540 yeah. over the spine. Yeah, fakey, fakey to forward 540. Oh, that was my park. That baby. was your shit. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Was, <laughs> you, guys, you guys ruled that park. That was it, like I said. I mean, it was like you know, it was. It's. I, I'm, I'm drawn to all things creative, and 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 skateboarding was such a blank canvas at that time. There's mm-hmm. so much to do. Um, and so much to, you know, so much to create and so many new ideas that it's like you can check on some of the uh, old footage 
and you can see on the bottom of my board there's like a little square uh, piece of sticker paper. Oh, your and trick list? They, yeah, it was my trick list, yeah. and I would go down my trick list and, and check on your it. board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had and a so, sticker on your board with a checklist. Yeah, it just where I wrote, wrote my notes of all the different tricks that I wanted to do, <laughs> and I would just do them and check them off. Yeah, and so what are you I, carry around a pen when and no, when so you're that, skating. So, so the night, like the night before, I'd go You'd skate. Write I'd, down I'd every... write them. Yeah, I'd have I'd write it all down on my little sticker paper on the bottom of my board. Huh. And, yep, check them out. Wow. Was that like a thing, or was that just you doing your? Yeah, that was that just me doing my thing. Yeah. That was me kind of, you know. I mean, there was so many options for McGill's Park. It just seemed oh, yeah. like a, a goddamn playground for skateboarding. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'm sure you're like, oh, I can do this over that. And yeah, all these, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, it, So that's when, like, you know, street tricks were kind of being introduced to transitions. And, you know, gotcha. and, and you know, McGill's has a, had a spine, had hips, had mm. a big hip, had a small hip, and had vert. Had like and little so extensions and all yeah. that, all that stuff. So up Ooh. and down, trans, you know, uh, extensions and you know, being able to use that little hip section and to, you know, to do manuals, you know, from one ramp to the other. And so there was a lot of cool, you mm. know, dif different things yet to be done that we were able to kind of interesting do so for the first time. You do a trick and then stop, look at your board and be like, okay, I'm going to do that trick and then put it down and do it. Yep. That's well, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> how, old, how old were you at this point? So that was pre-driver's license. I mean, I'm I'm looking at 12, 13, possibly. 12, yeah. How would you get down so to wait, Miguel's from Oceanside? I would have to take the bus. Mm -hmm. My sister would rarely, my older sister would rarely, you know, drive me to the skate park. So I would have to take the bus. And if you're familiar with that area, the bus would stop at El Camino Real. Okay. Right, which would leave me probably about two, uh, about three miles. And McGill's on what, Palom uh, Palmar? Palmar Airport, Airport Road. Road, yeah. You know, about three or so miles in, yeah. which, uh, you know, back in those days, it was a two lane, a, a two lane road, really rough, some narrow shoulders and stuff like mm, that. So yeah. you had, you know, a little young kid just skating down the side of the road with, uh, on his plywood on his on, back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. On, you know, on a, with my backpack with full of pads, sure. whatever, holding my, my ramp board, riding my street board. Oh, so you had two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's put this better into perspective. How, from Oceanside to McGill's Park, how long? How, I mean, um, how many miles do you think? That's probably about a good 15 miles. 15 yeah. miles. Yeah. So you ride, ride the bus, you know, 10 miles. Yeah. And then you skate the skate rest the of the rest. way. Skate the rest. Damn. And, um, and that's uphill and, too, and, I think. And, oh, yeah, is it? And cross your fingers and toes that you can get a ride back at least oh. to the to El Camino Real. And, um, you know, most of the time I was lucky. I mean, most yeah. of the time either, either Adrian Demain or somebody would be there. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, getting there was a different story. That's sometimes. quite the yeah. trek. Yeah. And I would be there every day. Every day. I was there every day. Would you go after school or? I would go after school. Uh, when I would go after school, I'd, I'd have buddies. I had a couple of buddies that actually um, would go with me mm. that, that were from, you know, uh, my school, El Camino. Yeah. El okay. Camino High School. Oh, okay. And um, that's, you know, that, that, that made it easier. You know, For being sure. able to get a ride there because was El Camino along the uh, bunch of ledges, the uh, square brown rail, brown. Uh, uh, it, there was like a mm, six, five. It was six, seven, eight stair, and uh, like an eleven stair. Hmm. Jamie Thomas uh, had it had a had a couple of lines in there. Is there so it's a first rail, then flat, and then there's another rail. Or no? Uh, first rail, and then, yeah, flat space, and then They used to rail. get a lot back in the day. Right, right. Mus Muska. Muska. You did, like, a couple of tricks on it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then so, yeah. and so the, the yeah, so the 11 stair rail, it ended, there was a wall at yep. the, yeah, that one. Gotcha. Pretty, chunk, pretty chunky, pretty oh, chunky yeah, wall. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're spending all your days there, and then what happened with the Danny Way thing? You you were skating with Danny Way a lot. I was skating with Danny Way. He was Way a local there? Every day, pretty every much, day. at McGill's, and we would oh. just, you know, we would, uh, you know, we would vibe off of each other. And okay. Like, you know. Did he have a trick list on his board? I think he had his trick list okay. up here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would actually physically write it down. <laughs> I just had, I had so many different ideas that I was just like, I, you know. What if I you slid? Right what if you slid on on your board and you couldn't see the list? He had rails. I had rails. Oh, you had rails. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. I've never had rails, so I don't, yeah. always don't think of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. Do you even do board stars. slides? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> usually, usually not. 14. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> Forbidden fourteen. Yeah. Right. But so now uh, you said Stacy Peralta. He didn't show up at the park. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't show. Up. I mean, it must have been heartbreak. But then here's Danny he Way saying, "Hey, man." Danny rode for Powell. Let's get it. One yeah, no, he rode for yeah, he rode for Powell actually before that. Yeah. So oh, um, okay. yeah, but it was you know, Eighth Street was. Eighth Street was one of those things where it was like 
after Shackle Me Not, then it was on everybody's radar. But before that, it was like no one knew who most of the dudes on the team, mm-hmm. you know, was. Like even, you know, Matt Henze at that point, no one you yeah. know, knew. I think everyone knew who Danny Way was kind of at that point. He was kind of up and coming. He'd already been on Powell, but uh-huh. Vision before that and stuff like that. And so but and he after was that video. young as shit then, too. He's yeah. Like mm-hmm. 13, 14, probably. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're both the same age. Yeah. So he's already on H Street. And then how did... Did he have to talk to somebody? Like, how did that, how did you get on, on? So basically, I guess there had already, already had been conversations about me amongst oh. the group, amongst, you know, Trinansky. That's good to know. That's peace. good feeling. And uh, Tony Mag. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, you know, I was kind of building a, a, a little bit of a reputation, you know, as the local kid at the at McGill's Park. I was there every day. Right. Trying it all, like yeah. whatever, you know, what, what whatever there was to try, I'd, I'd done, tried it, you know, sure. by then, so. You know, a lot of people had already kind of was starting getting, starting to get familiar with me. You know what I mean? Right. Like there was a buzz that I was supposed to get on Powell and all this stuff. So, mm. um, I guess everybody was on board with putting me on. I ended up on Eighth Street, which there uh, you go. And you actually got some boards this time. And I actually got boards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's you a, know, cool clothing. It was it was amazing. You did know you ever I mean? get the uh, the bat shirt with the tails? No, I never ran that. That was <laughs> never, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That was that wasn't me. So you're on now. Now, is there talks about like filming a video or doing this or mm-hmm. uh, photos and mags? I mean, now you now you're doing it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I it's, mean, Eighth Street was always productive yeah. in filming video. I mean, you know, as soon as one video would end, we you know we would we would never stop really filming. You right. know what I mean, it was right. it was always you know vans vans full of dudes like off on different locations you know i mean whether it was you know hitting the streets or mm-hmm. linda vista or mcgill's park i mean it was is it, it all was pretty, pretty much yeah that? For, yeah tony mag actually started kind of filming uh at a certain part but it was mainly uh mike was filming was dan stewart like was he uh dan full-time stewart. for H street then um, or was he just kind of like shooting he because this stuff was always different because he right. used, like reflectors and all that shit. right right he, he had some pretty distinctive looking footage that mm-hmm. he'd filmed um yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, it, there was a few people that filmed for 8th Street. Um, it was uh, Trinansky, mm-hmm. Mag sometimes. Um, I think Dave Sloshbach, mm-hmm. if oh, you're well, familiar yeah, with him, yeah. he would film sometimes. And uh, Dan Sturt was, uh, was, was definitely a key part in, in, uh, in filming a lot of the footage back then. What was, but Costin was skated, skated for 8th Street, right? Yep. Was he on the same? Carol, too. Yep. Carol, yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah. yeah, Carol was more, you know, SF. I guess a lot of those, uh, I guess... He, uh, Carol ended up hanging out at the 8th Street house every every so often. Okay. So that was before my time, but wasn't there a bunch of people on 8th Street at that? Like, yeah, Oh, yeah. It was huge. Yeah, mm. it was. Everybody was on 8th Street at a certain Sal point. Barbier? Oh, wow. Sal Barbier. Swamp Rats. So you guys all would skate with each other, or was it just like you would see the footage at the end of the, at the end, when the video was done, you'd just see everyone skating? We, Probably yeah, whoever we, was we, in we, town. Yeah, right? whoever was in town, for the most part. We had a team house back then, which was, you know, in Scripps Ranch, in a pretty nice family neighborhood okay you know what i mean yeah. nice family house family home team house nice <laughs> home nice home so you, know what I mean? <laughs> you guys stuck out like a sore right. thumb right yeah. yeah yeah there's you know the, the lawn had got all torn up and inside <laughs> of the house was all it smelled like was there a ramp up. at the house no ramp no no in the uh warehouse okay is that where you met costin for the most part yeah yeah interesting he was always you know the first first time i became aware of you was the union video oh shit okay that was the first time i yeah. because costin was in it you were i loved your part bro oh thank you uh, that music it was kind of slow right kind of this dreamy state i i haven't seen it in a while right but i, I yeah, want to go either. man i want to go back and watch that yeah that no costin had a good part but i always liked your part though oh thank maybe you maybe a little bit even more than costin's you know what i mean oh wow <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Check yeah. some out. <laughs> yeah. No, but I did. I I really I watched your your part and his part. That was the only parts I watched in that video. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. I don't yeah. remember who else was in the video. I might have seen that video a couple, a few yeah. times. I forget myself. Uh, I talked to Jamie Mossberg every once in a while, though. I mean, he's the one that filmed that. And oh, he's right. Been gotcha. responsible okay. for filming like the end and yes. some other cool projects that he's been a part of but nice. yeah oh, those are some fun days what was the video that you know slid that rail was that in that video was that in that, that wasn't the in big ass one yeah. that was, that was that sight was, unseen was that, was sight, that un- sight unseen yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Sight unseen. and there no, was uh, we, no, the, uh, just a nose slide right not, the round you front nose one. Uh, no not i didn't front nose that one oh yeah <laughs> years before i front nosed uh um oceanside high oceanside yep. high which rail is that that's uh um you remember raleigh's 360 flip down the 13 stair is it cover uh, a trans world, cover a trans world. Mm. um jamie, jamie thomas uh barefoot 
50-50s. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Front nose diamond. That's yeah, pretty like a good. White hat on or something like that. I had the all white cover or whatever, and that was at a different school. Right. Another thirteen stair rail. Front board though, right? Front nose. Front front They're nose. both front yeah. nose. I mean, uh, the f- go ahead. I'm but sorry. It's a, but but that school was actually up the street from Oceanside mm-hmm. High, about a couple of miles. Yeah. It's funny now. 13. I see all all these people skating that rail that you know slid. Oh, yeah, Nigel, the, 50, Nigel, 50, 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What were you thinking back then? I mean, no, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a long. It's that's a. It's a good no slide. I Thanks. Really... I mean, shit. I'm trying to keep up. I guess. I mean, you know, I'm not really the. I was never really like the patient, like technical spend fucking. You know, hours eight, hours, and hours on a you know right. on on anything technical. Right. So I just kind of, you know, either went for it or got hurt type of to dude. me to me you kind of stood out like that i don't maybe i wasn't aware but it seemed like nobody was kind of no sliding big red you know what i mean like right. it, it was kind of a different yeah raj is shaking his head but no, I, maybe no. i was not in the know of every but to me you that's like i'm like here's this front uh, just no sliding this rail it's right. kind of out in the ordinary for me, you right. know. Every, was, every you know, feeble grind, all this grinding. There's kind of there was only a handful of people doing it, well, really. Uh, yeah, and he was yeah. No slide that was no one. No one even does no slide on round That's, rails. Like yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, front yeah. nose, yeah. Rick Howard. Front nose, the uh, federal building. Yeah. You know, yeah. little yeah. things like that. They stick out. To, they think, stick out to me. You know, I think transition skills kind of probably help. Yeah, in you know. Skating rails. For okay. Sure. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Why do you say that? It's just kind of like coping, I guess. Yeah, you true. know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. Oh. So I, I, I mean, you know, at least if you can con- convince your mind, you know, that that's the case, then you can kind of feel more comfortable with <laughs> sure. that type of shit. With nose slides for me, well, see, so back in those days, there weren't like skate parks that you can kind of go and kind of you know warm up and kind of get used to the, mm. used to the feeling of things. I literally went from skating the YMCA street course, which had a equivalent to maybe like a four stair square rail okay. that I would go and, and, and no slide after no slide after no slide until I got really comfortable with the aim. Sure. And I felt, I felt like if I can get the aim right and just commit to standing there, yeah, then I can make it down. I can make it down, uh, that rail. And I felt like if I were, if I could at least commit to a, a eight, a six to eight foot slide. Yeah. I can clear the stairs and kind of be safe. <laughs> yeah. just, at least that's, that's, what, at least that's what I told myself. You go right. fast enough, you can do it. Right. But if you looked at that footage, um, I kind of, no, that was actually the front board down that thing. I, I had hit my front wheels coming up oh. and, you know, on, on a front side board slide and then kind of. You still did it. And made it. Yeah, wow. I wasn't, wasn't trying Escaping to go back. Well, how many right tries there. was the nose slide? The nose slide, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think that might have been like six tries or so. Damn. Yeah. I just felt like my aim was right. And if I just stomped all my weight on it, yeah, like the slope was going to take me the rest of the way. Because to me, a no slide, you're standing on top of it and almost yeah. like leaning over right. a little bit. To It's 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 it's, it's like more sketchy. Right. You well, know? It's kind of awkward on a, it's on a round, there you go. long rail. Yeah. 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 And right. It's, How many stairs was that? 18? I think it, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something oh. like that. But you were were you the first one to skate that? I don't know if it was me or Jamie Thomas. Yeah, it was mm, what did yeah. Jamie do? Fifty fifty. I think Jay. Okay, Jamie did the the Smith grind down it. That's what okay. it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, and I remember, I, I remember, I, I was trying. I think the first trick that I tried down that was a feeble grind, and I hurt myself. I uh, I loosened up some ligaments or whatever on my knee, um, on my knee and I oh, couldn't no. finish it. And so in between uh, me healing, he had went and uh, did a Smith grind down it, <laughs> and it ended up in the magazine. It was a still shot. And I remember being pissed and calling, like, yo, what's what's up with you? Like, <laughs> yeah, you right. Know, you knew I was working on some shit. Like, are you gonna go seriously and you call feeble, them. feeble grind this shit while I'm hurt? And he's like, It was a Smith grind. I was like, okay, you got it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. dude. Funny. Shout Damn. out to Jamie. I love that dude. That's cool amazing, as shit. Yeah. dude. That's funny back then when skaters were so gnarly about that. Like, oh, oh that's yeah. I'm doing that trick there, bro. What the fuck? Well, yeah, I'm you know, uh, it, you're a business. Know, that's, yeah. It was one of those yeah, things yeah. where it's like, you know, I, I I didn't have too much, you know what I mean, to, to offer, I felt. And so that was like, he was taking one of my big, like, that's you know. That's a big one. My, you know, my yeah. big stunts. But at the same time, too, it's like so small. The industry is so small. Right. And you hear the next day that Jamie Thomas probably, you know what I mean? It, right. it travels quick. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. 
So you were the first one to skate the rail. Let's like, <laughs> uh, just get that out there. I, 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 don't, I don't know that. I'm, I mean, well, he, I'm, I'm telling you. You're, right. the fir- you're the first. Yep. yep. Okay. He, he said so. <laughs> That's right. That's Jamie right. Thomas might have something else to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. He's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, amazing skating. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Do you have a favorite? Because we keep talking about the no slide. You know, right. do, you, do you have some favorite clips that you, you did? Those are probably some of the most prideful things yeah, that, yeah, I, that I was admit. able to kind of do you know what i mean just because you know a, a rail that big like I mean, at that point people weren't really you know that, 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 that kind of that was kind of the extent of big rails yeah, sure you know i mean it was you know uh that and like el toro being a 20 stair mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. i mean i was kind of pretty pumped on that there wasn't that you know there's a handful of people that were kind of skating rails yeah, that big yeah and so you know like i said i didn't have the patience i had i had more balls and patience i guess sure you know sure I mean? so, yeah yeah uh, do you ever think about El Toro after the... Shit, I thought all things? kind of things. Yeah? <laughs> I thought all kind of things. So, I mean, that, 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 that was kind of a good, a good thing that I kind of fell into. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate to be able to find opportunities in footwear design because I was probably <laughs> I was probably about to body myself <laughs> so at, at a certain point trying to keep up. Let's slow down, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, because oh, I was convincing myself of all kind of things. I'm going to do this, down that, and that. And yeah. I think you could have done it. I think so, Hell too. Hell yeah. Uh, who knows? Who knows? What would you have tried? Like, seriously, I was convinced that I was going to go back to the uh, La Jolla rail and do a frontside 270 lip slide because I was really getting good at that uh, at that trick. Mm. There was a flat bar in Sorrento Valley that was about a couple of foot tall, mm-hmm. and I was, uh, I was doing them on that and got it to a point where I can slide them really long. And so I'm thinking, there's no difference. Than, you know, I started convincing myself it was almost like kind of doing like an ollie disaster on a on a on a ledge right okay and then from yep. there you're on a rail so the slope is going to take you the rest of the way so i was kind of convinced that go. that it was kind of a similar to like doing a frontside 180 over a rail but you're overturning it you're overturning it and then yeah. from there you just mm-hmm. you know my idea was i was going to keep my my hands in front so if i were to fall mm-hmm. forward I, yeah so i had i had fully convinced <laughs> you planned myself, it out yeah i convinced myself okay so that's my escape route i keep my hands like this and if i fall <laughs> forward I'm, I'm good which what? rail was this? I can't, I don't know. Niger Houston. The no front. slide rail. You were going to so, try it on that. Holy <laughs> 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 shit. I, 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 I figured there wasn't too many years left okay. and I was going to go and go, wow. you know, go out with That'll a bang. take you for a while. If you, that'll oh. extend your career a little bit longer. Well, I, I thought at the very least people would have thought I was a nut for even trying yeah. something like that at that, at that stage, at that point, you know what I mean? Yeah. And on a rail that big. So I figured, fuck it, I'll, I'll go for it. I was convinced that, you know I mean? I mean, to I was, this day, you don't even see that kind of shit. Uh, Deshaun. Okay. Oh well, yeah. Deshaun. Okay. There's a yeah. few. Yeah. There's so a few. Saw, so but when you know I saw I mean. him, yeah, when I saw him do that, that brought back memories. Like, oh fuck, I, I was convincing myself that, I, that that's what it would have looked like. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, who knows what it would have happened? What but, happened? But you didn't even I, try. I had hurt myself. I had no. sprained. I had sprained my ankle really bad um, on some film trip uh, in San Francisco. Mm. You know, took a long drive out to San Francisco, and in less than fucking twenty minutes, I'd you know hurt myself oh, really bad. Didn't recover from that injury uh, for a while, and by that time, I'd already, you know, had been designing footwear and kind of right, immersed in, okay. in, 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 you know, in, in that the job of designing and developing footwear. Right, right. That um, by the time I was healed, I was already kind of over it. You were in it, really. Yeah, I was done. Yeah, I, you know, I came to the conclusion that you know, the, the skateboarding was going to come to an end at, at some point, and I was lucky to have been able to transition into designing Something, footwear right, so let's not right. you know push my luck <laughs> what year was this 98 99 somewhere around there what when you hurt yourself or you're just over it when i hurt myself and kind of when things kind of slowed down from you that. were you were still pro in expedition when i got on that was like 2003 was it that late yeah i got on like right when i graduated high school yeah i mean maybe you had a board I, out for a while I, I mean i guess you're when you're pro you're kind of always considered pro but i mean by that point i'd slowed down hmm. you know drastically i'd already kind of really transitioned into designing footwear and had been you know on that path and hmm. so i figured okay cool i don't have to fucking <laughs> sacrifice myself well, anymore out i feel here like we're fast forward through your life right now i was gonna say we because we haven't even covered like oh, right, you right. know xyz yeah. and drawers and right. i mean you, you get a lot of I want to go back of, to H Street. Let's go back to H <laughs> Street, Raj. It. What do you got, bro? One thing that sticks in my mind is your Hocus Pocus part that you shared with uh, Danny and Matt. Mm-hmm. We basically just gave the McGill's Park, but your song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was... Uh, that's 
I mean, Don't call me nigga. Yeah. It's, Why? If, if that song came out today, people would be fucking tripping. Right. That was Mike Ternatsky's idea at that mm. point. And I was, I was on board with it. I mean, he was kind of use utilizing, you know, me as kind of that, that, that social statement and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, which is pretty cool. I think a lot of people remember that yeah. because I mean, that, that, you know, that, yeah. that soundtrack, that was pretty, yeah, it was heavy. pretty punctual. It was, yeah. it was pretty heavy. So, pe- you know, it, it was sticky. So yeah, that was Trinancy's idea, and I kind of spoke to that narrative at the beginning of the video, and and uh, you know it became a memorable uh, moment for a lot of people growing up in that era. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of the voice of that, you know, what I mean, of, of that narrative. Did you um, feel a lot of industry. racism back then too, or I kind of did. did yeah, you? I mean, especially back then. I mean, skateboarding wasn't as diverse as it is now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there was a handful of you know black kids mm-hmm. skateboarding back then, and you know, I was one of them, one of them riding for. Uh, you know, a pretty uh, visible uh, company at that time. So making that statement was pretty bold, uh, you know, for, for a young kid yeah. at, at that point in time. And were the Godoy's uh, on the team when you were on? Yeah. So, they, uh, well, I think they were on for a little while, but then shortly after that, they had split off and started doing Iron Cross mm-hmm. skateboards. Hmm. Um, which, I mean, I kind of was already up on game with like what that meant and all the swastikas and stuff by that time. So I was already kind of like, okay, you know, I've, you know, I've, had respect for those dudes because they, you know they're vert ogs and part of the same team and stuff like that. But I kind of knew that okay, those probably aren't my homies. I mean, I don't yeah. know what their intentions are, but I mean, I were they cool with you? Like, because they skate McGill. They all, right? yeah, all those dudes that try to kind of rep that a little bit were kind of they never really confronted me with no bullshit. Right. You know mm-hmm. I mean, really, I mean, no, I, I never experienced no bullshit from from those dudes. I mean, they were always you know pretty pretty nice dudes. Right. You know, I mean, it, it never really made sense to me that, you know, they... Because now this generation would look back on it and just be like, those guys are racist. Yeah. You no, know? I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know what it was about that. Like, uh, you know, those, those, some of those older dudes kind of running around swastikas and stuff on their boards and yeah. whatever. I don't, but a lot of those dudes, I felt like, you know, at their core, they weren't really like that. I mean, they, I think they were just on some kind of bandwagon as to what they thought were kind of was kind of cool at the time you know, sure, I mean, like yeah, all sure. the, you know the inspired by the like you know jay adams and, and dudes like that were kind of running around with uh, mm. with swastikas and stuff on their board and i don't, I don't who i'm about to say uh, who knows if they really kind of knew what that meant but i mean how could you not right yeah right but i don't i don't know that at their core that that was really their beliefs and how they thought and you know whatever right but i mean it was kind of it was kind of the trend for a while, you know what I mean? Just yeah. like for a while, like, I don't know when it was, but everyone was rocking Iron Cross, like, fucking shirts and just whatever else, mm-hmm, not really mm-hmm. kind of understanding or knowing, you know, what what it implied. Sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Was that, that Knox Godoy's dad? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Knox, Knox Godoy's dad had a twin. Uh, oh. Uh, is Art and Steve? Art and yeah. Steve, yeah. yeah. I don't, is, is. I think Art's his dad. Art's his dad, yeah. Hmm. Oh, and they great. both skated for 8th Street. They both skated yeah. for 8th Street. Oh, twins. Twins. Yeah. Learn something new every day on the Nine Club, yeah. Kelly. Huh? Yeah, you know what I'm that, yeah, I never knew that. No. You got to dig, <laughs> dig back far enough. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know we're talking about Hocus Pocus, but I, really quick, though, I, I, I wanted to ask, because I've always wondered this, what, where the hell was that ledge that you and Costin and all those dudes skated? It was like a, a big red curb that ended you guys always skate that you might be talking about the kmart curbs was that the kmart was that the it was it was that in the union video yeah yeah, 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 yeah 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 the kmart curb uh right off of the five and oceanside boulevard or wait no mission and speaking of mission i was just watching uh riley's episode um up the street from riley's uh new um Coffee, coffee spot. Shop. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. Sick. And I don't know. I don't know if that ledge is still there. I know the Kmart isn't there anymore. Mm, okay. But uh, yeah, we used to. When I used to live with Costin. We used to skate there all the time. Man, yeah, I, that was our spot. God, I have, I, I, as a kid, I always wanted to go there. I always <laughs> wanted to skate there. I was the <laughs> first one to wax that that curb. Up. Like a lot of the Oceanside spots. Yeah. I found a lot of those spots because I was from that area. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And, you know, Trans World was right there, and oh, yeah. um, I think we were. Like I was at uh, at one point like the closest living pro to Trans World. Oh you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Did you see the animal chin ramp when it was there? No. Um, a couple of buddies that I went to school with would show up like five or six in the morning, and they would get to skate like the little 
mini ramp on the top of the deck or whatever oh, no before way. the crew got there to film. But actually, that ramp actually sits about, I'm going to call it about a quarter mile from where the uh, Oceanside Prince Park um, sits now. Oh, no way. Yeah. You skate there a lot, don't you? Prince yeah, Park? I yeah. do. I, I mean, that's one of my favorite parks because it's like I... You know, I, I keep it low impact these days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the perfect thing about that park is like, you know, in the front of that park, there's like a, a two foot quarter pipe. And I just, I, I, I just go up there and I'll do like pivot to fakies, like, you know, for, for an hour and like, yeah. little, you know, pivot tricks or whatever. And just, that's like the funnest well, thing. Well, you know, it's funny. Sorry to get off topic on that real quick, but like, it's funny to see your skateboarding back then. You were skating transition, super heavy. Mm-hmm. Then you went in the street, got super like jumping down big stuff. Mm-hmm. You get older and, and then you fall back right where you be, you you started right. and it's it's awesome because you know how to skate that stuff super well. Yeah, yeah I think you know, uh, like you natural know, as fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my yeah, my, really my zone th- these days, like I said, it's low in impact. It's about being kind of more creative than gnarly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. that you know I'm I'm from an era of, tra- of, of of transition skateboarding where, um, I think there's a there's still a lot of just creative things that is still yet to be done or haven't been done in such a while that it's almost like new again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right, a lot of new, right. newer kids haven't seen like sure. some of the, you know, some, some of the, um, creative uh, transition tricks that, right. that we're doing back then. So yeah. it's fun to kind of re introduce those and kind of re relearn some of those things again. Mm. Yeah. And my, for coming from me, it's fun to watch because I just knew grew, I grew up watching you doing gnarly stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. dang, you just tranny hella good. Mm. Like I never knew that. Mm. So it's cool. I don't know. It's just kind of rad to see. Yeah. See you still skating, you know? That's so funny because, like, for me, it was like, he killed Tranny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was then, before like, my time, you then know? Then he went to street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. Alfonso did you like better, Raj? I like H. Reed Alfonso. Okay. I like Alfonso now. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I like you, too, right now. <laughs> you know? Thank you, Al. I don't care what anyone says about <laughs> yeah. you. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we all me. love you, Kelly. Trust Thank me. you. I love you, too, bro. But <laughs> So no 270 lips or anything? Oh, no. They don't pay me enough no, to do no. that okay. type of shit. No. <laughs> uh, I will, I'm, I'm keeping my balls right, <laughs> right here. In my, yeah. There you no, go. I kind of need them. You need them. But you know what? Some, I mean, not to say that I'm ever going to do some shit like that again, but I mean, sometimes I get sparked you up and kind of uh, probably take it a little, a little bit beyond where I probably should. I mean, sure. I, I did maybe a year or so, or maybe a couple of years back, I, I did do a 270 lip down the, um, down the rail at the, uh, what was black black box park? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, that still feels like a pretty long rail for me. I, sure. I, I surprised myself because it, it hadn't been, it, it, it had been since, you know, those days since I've even tried that trick or whatever. So yeah. what is it like a seven stair or something like that or an eight stair? Something around there. Yeah. yeah. yeah something that's, around there. That's dope. I mean, some say, days I, I you just, myself. some days you're just skating and you just, you just feel like you, you could do shit. Yeah. Sometimes you I know? get fired up. Depends, yeah, on, depends on who up. I'm skating with or just exactly. whatever. Sometimes I just, I feel that I feel the, you, I feel the glow. You feel it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that glow, man. Yeah. Glow is hard to come by for me. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's, you it's, know. Yeah, I have a lot of dim days, but uh, sometimes I feel that high pro glow, man. And, I, you know, I, 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 I start kind of stretching a little bit beyond my means sometimes. For sure, sure. I have to reel it back every once in a while. You know? Don't hey, reel man. it back, dude. Just keep going. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, if I, you know, maybe we should sesh sometimes. Hey. You know, maybe, maybe we'll, I'll get the glow back. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Where can we go, bro? Dude, all the Where, spots knows, around here, all, all the the Santa Monica Venice spots are kind of getting revamped again. I feel like it's kind of fun. See, I see Raj hitting some curbs and stuff, some pretty cool curbs. I mean, that's you know that's yeah. that's my speed right there. I'm that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's a really low impact. There's some good ones right here for sure. Let's yeah. just hit the barracks. Oh yeah, you, you know that. what? I I love the barracks. Man. It's fun. We, we yeah, got to hit a Vinny Ponte again and go skate there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, that's yeah. good energy right yeah, there. Yeah. I <laughs> love skating with Vinny. Like, yeah. Anytime I could skate and laugh, like I mean, that's. That, those are good times. He'd probably yeah, be wearing sure. some Nike high tops and some sweatpants for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. 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 shorts. You guys will yeah. clown each other too, man. That's that's just... the funnest part. <laughs> that is the funnest part. You know what I mean? We can just say anything to each other and just have a good time. You guys ever talk about flat Earth? I felt for him when he brought that up on the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's watch yourself talk. You know, it's, it's it's one of those things where it's like you know you have these certain ideas or whatever that you think may be true, or whatever. But sometimes you can't find the words in 
in order to kind of articulate sure. in such a way that right. doesn't make you sound crazy or whatever. And I, I felt like he got himself in a little pickle because I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's, he's gathered some information in his mind that probably makes sense. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's debates on each side of whatever argument that you're talking about that, Oh, okay. That makes sense or whatever. And yeah, so, of course, um, he just probably wasn't able to articulate what valid information that he sure. thought, like he, you know, yeah. I thought it was hilarious. I love yeah. him. Yeah. 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 I love him. <laughs> but let, let's go back. I mean, you were talking about H street and then like, you know, you, you skated for draw, uh, drawers yep. and, um, you know, I, I got evil. You forgot evil, you, forgot natural. evil, you know, right. the yep. burrito company, right. Is <laughs> yeah. that, uh, no, was, <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, I skated for drawers for a little bit. Yeah. I wasn't on the team. I just got flowed, but you know what? I went in there one day and they let me take, so much shit. Yeah. They just said, basically, fill up this cart, whatever you want. Wow. It was insane. Generous dudes. I don't yeah, even remember sure. who brought me there. I don't even remember why I was... Yeah. I, I just... That's, very generous dudes. Awesome. Very generous. Yeah. I used to live with Ken Block, actually, when he was starting oh, really? with DC shoes and you know running drawers and all that stuff. Yeah. And it was sick to be able to go in there and just basically like kind of Christmas shop. Because, yeah. I mean, there you go. You know, there you are like in a warehouse full of the clothes that you would buy anyways. If you I mean, they, they, they made cool stuff. They really did. Yeah. yeah. They were they were cutting edge like skateboard fashion sure. for sure yeah. back then. Yeah. I mean, didn't I definitely you have an was, underwear company. I didn't have an underwear company. I, I actually had a signature underwear. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> four drawers, yeah. actually. And it was the time when Calvin Klein boxers started coming out. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I guess was kind of known for rocking those, you know, Calvin Klein underwears or whatever. And yeah. so they're like, oh, we're going to make those. Why don't we make you a signature, you know, boxer like right, that? And so oh. that's where that came from. How did that, yeah. how did it do? Did you um, get royalties on these boxers? I got royalties. I, I didn't really ma remember making yeah. too much money for okay. it, but um, <laughs> it was a cool little campaign. And, yeah. yeah. It was fun. I was, I, was, I was happy to be a part of it. What was that? Didn't you, what, didn't you have some ad you were you were doing that you were holding? Hand bra? Hand, yeah. hand bra. Yeah. yeah. So, what uh, was that? What was that? Was that a drawers ad? That was a drawers ad. Yeah. I remember, yeah. And um, what did it say? Was it like the United Colors of whatever, whatever it was? But basically. Might have like Benetton, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. It was, it was uh, you know, it was, um, no, that was something else. That was an evil board. And it was Janet. It was uh, photoshopped my hands over Janet Jackson's That's breasts. That's right. Remember, <laughs> That's remember, right. remember the yes. cover, the Rolling Stone cover of Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. and there was someone holding their uh, the breasts. Right. The uh, art director for Evil at the time, uh, Nico okay. Akatipis mm -hmm. or whatever. Huh. Like you know, on the human I mean, smile. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> he. Uh, I think this was even before Photoshop or whatever. He had, he had came up with the idea and. Um, and uh, dubbed me in doing that, and um, I actually have one. I still have one of the shirts. Somewhere. Oh, do you? Yeah, that was one of my oh. favorite graphics. Was that, that a that board cool. graphic too? That was a board graphic. Do you keep a, a lot of all your old stuff? Or I you, don't. Uh, no, man, I really? was really bad at kind of keeping all my old stuff. Huh? No, I don't have none of kinda that. Kind of wish stuff, you really. did, or, or kind of. Are you not a hoarder? No, no not really. Like, really? Really? Yeah, not really. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, cool maybe, maybe later on. What life. about the boxers? Did you keep a pair? No. None of those. Mm -hmm. Still no wearing them? them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. yeah, I never took them off. <laughs> <laughs> when you were on drawers, who were you skating for at that time? Evil. Oh, natural. Still, yeah, that was still evil. It was, oh, natural. was it? Yeah. Oh. So evil, what evil was, it was uh, after um, after 8th Street split up yep. and formed Plan B, um, 8th Street had changed its name to Evil because I think that there, there was somebody else, a, a, a third or so business partner mm -hmm. that still had the rights to the 8th Street name. And I think oh. there was a conflict there. And so Magnuson had changed, uh, changed it to Evil, which was basically um, love spelt backwards. Yes. Right? Okay. And so uh, I was, uh, I was riding for Evil at the time. Were you bummed you weren't on Plan B? Yeah, I mean, I kind of was. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I, you Did know, he... I, 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 I got it. I mean, it was Danny Way was already on. They didn't need two Danny Ways. I was basically, you know, Danny Way was the a better Alfonso Rawls. <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, you know, wow. Let's, uh, let's, let's be real. So, um, I think um, it would have been fucking epic if you were on there. No, but I mean, but nonetheless, you know, I, I, I felt some some loyalty to Magnuson as well because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a big chunk of his whole you know team that just kind of left, which right. Nancy Ewan wasn't just his team, but it was sure, sure. you know him and Mags, whatever. But you know, I, I, I felt some loyalty and responsibility to be able to stay at Eighth Street and kind yeah. of keep, which turned into Evil and and kind of keep that going Hell, with him. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Why did th that even break up in the first place? Well, because I think that. Um, 
team was too the, big. A lot of the team, you know, a lot, a lot of the team was kind of getting frustrated that the team was getting too big. And uh-huh. They just kind of didn't have the same spark as they, you know, as they felt like it did in, in the earlier days. So they wanted to kind of split off and do something new. Oh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. What are we talking big, Raj? How, how many people <sighs> on the team? Had like hundreds of dudes on the hundreds. team. Hundreds. It was, yeah, it was a phone book. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they're, they're, they're giving Everybody boards to hundreds Dude, go of watch people. Hocus Pocus. There's like so many dudes you can't even like. This. But I mean, like legit, like how many on the team? Like legit, like it kind of became hard to delineate at a certain point. It's kind of like independent, like they, there's all all right. these dudes, like pages of dudes. Right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There was. Yeah, oh. There was there was tons of people. And okay. Some, you know, some, I can understand how that could be a little lame right. to a skater. Right. right? You have right. this amazing company, and then they're right. just put what anybody can get on yeah so that's kind of like, what it felt like to some of the dudes that were really sure. kind of cutting edge you know they I mean the danny ways and the yeah. you know the hensleys and the you know all the people that kind of formed right you know plan b wanted something a little tighter more special yeah you know i mean uh, eight street cut it kind of they felt like it ran its course and it just got to not be as special as it was when mm-hmm. it was kind of more exclusive and hmm. you know they just felt like it was time to yeah yeah. Peel away and do something new. All good but things you know what? come at, to an at, end. At the beginning of that, like maybe, you know, a year or so, maybe you know, it's years, months, I don't know, whatever, mm-hmm. before uh, uh, Plan B peeled off to do Plan B, mm-hmm. um, I was, I, from what I understand, from what Trinancy was telling me, I was one of the first ones that he was kind of letting in on like, hey, I'm starting this new thing and oh, whatever. Really? And so it was shaping up like, oh, wow, I'm going to be doing gonna... this new thing or whatever. But right. when it finally happened... That wasn't you didn't the get the call, right? Damn. Or was he just trying to like, like maybe we can get in the world camp? What's that? Was he trying to get you like into the world camp? I think because was, it was all like world plan B, yeah, one on one. I yeah, I I think that was kind of a big part of it as well. You know what I mean? I think that you know uh, Mike was really paying attention to what the dudes at World Industry was doing and the products and stuff that they were making, and mm-hmm. thought that would be a, a perfect fit for a new thing right. that they were doing that would make you know. Uh, quite the big splash in the industry and stuff. And well, you did end up there. I did end up there. This guy knows <laughs> this shit. <laughs> Not many people know. Yeah. Bitch. So bitch skateboard. <laughs> you want to talk about bitch skateboard? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when girl left, when, when all the girl dudes formed girl from, right. from, plan, from B. plan B and all that stuff, right. then Rocco went and did bitch. Sal Rocco. Sal Rocco. Steve Rocco's brother, Sal Rocco formed bitch as kind of a parody brand to girl right and at that point in my career i was you know i was trying to keep the dream alive you know what I mean? this was, was after like, evil this right. was after natural uh, natural, natural. Wait, okay was it after natural or was it natural after I, um, one of the two I, hmm. well no it, bitch it, it wasn't it, alone it was, for that long it was, wasn't it? yeah it wasn't, no, it, wasn't. it wasn't i think wasn't. That, are they still doing it in japan though <laughs> I, be. I don't know yeah, I, don't I don't know, know. Huh. but so i mean that was my options at that time yeah you know what i mean so it wasn't it wasn't that i had anything against the girls guys because sure. you know i mean me and costin were good buddies roommates and all that stuff but it was either that or go work at fucking home depot or whatever there you I don't go. Know. i'm wow. trying to keep the dream alive yeah. you know what i mean it, yeah. it comes to a inevitable inevitable end for everybody at some point but and did, so did you have to stretch it out absolutely did you have any boards on there did you have pro because all i remember I, was the 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 boards of like tim gavin with the little th- right. and then the the car right. they had the puppets they, yeah, they had everybody. Right. Did you have a board? I there? think I did have a pro model board. Yeah. yeah, because they were paying me to actually do graphics oh. and uh, and 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 ride pro for them. And I remember drawing a graph. I forget exactly what it was, but um, I don't know. I mean, if 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 I did have a board, there probably wasn't that many. Because that was I the only remember. graphics I remember was just the yeah, actual the girl pe- knockout. The penis board. Pe- uh, exactly. Tim Gavin had a penis. Yeah, and like, it was very you know, small. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and I, I remember, you know, explaining that to Costin, Hey, look, I obviously, I don't have nothing against you, but okay. I mean, I, 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 you guys, oh, I, yeah. I love you guys. You guys are cool with me. You know what I mean? But you know, it's, how did he think about, did he, that, that you think it was funny or I think those guys were kind of offended by it. Mm, you know what I mean? But me, right. you know, me I'm sure Megan and Rick were kind of pissed. Yeah. 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 I, I would have the, I, you know, yeah. Sal's intention wasn't going to be, wasn't yeah. nice about it. Sure. You know I mean, he was really trying to jab at those guys yeah, yeah, for yeah. You know, leaving or whatever. But I mean, for me, it was just, it was one of those things where it's like, man, if I can stretch this out for a little bit more, that's kind of what I got to do. Or sure. what are my options? I'm going to go, you know, what I'm, I'm trying to, you know, it's, it's, like, like the way Lance Mountain put it, it's like skateboarding is kind of like a fairy tale. You know what I mean? At, yeah. at a certain point, it comes to an end and you got to end up kind of figuring out what real life is about. And totally. So, you know, you're, you, what you would try to do as a professional skateboarder is like, 
you're trying to stretch that. You yeah. Know what I mean, you're yeah. trying to make your career last as long as possible. And sure. so that was my, that was my, uh, that was my MO. There. Okay. It wasn't at all to jab those guys or whatever, but it was either you guys pay me or they, they, I, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to pay some bills. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No but that didn't to last too long though, right? That it was didn't. a good year or something maybe? Right. And, 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 and I think it was just kind of due to the management of, of the company. I think mm -hmm. Sal always kind of came up missing and no one could get, you know what I mean? Whatever. So it was like, a, they, they wanted it to be a legitimate board company. I think it, I think they every bit wanted to, but okay. you know, due to the, the lack of management, sure. Or whatever. I always wondered about that. Yeah. yeah, it ran its course a little quicker than it. Um, yeah, I think Sal's like homeless on the streets of Redondo. <laughs> Is he really? Yeah, yeah. So last time I saw him, he was like homeless there. Wow. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'd, I'd hear pretty gnarly stories about Sal back in those days. Like, you know, what I mean, like, yeah, like doing like heavy drugs and Damn. Like, you know, and he had kids at yeah. the time, and just kind of crazy. Hmm. That's right. Was, but uh, yeah, it was. I think it was me and Wee Man. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was, was Wee, Wee Man. Man on the team too. <laughs> yeah. Just you two back then, and um, somebody else, maybe a couple of more people. I forget. Like, it was, I wait, mean, I, I think maybe it was I'm just, tripping. Was Simon Woodstock on that for some reason? No, no. Okay, no. He was done kicking up his shoes off. And yeah. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was getting a cease and desist from Rocco. <laughs> yeah, he did, huh? Yeah. yeah. Did he really? He got kicked out of the industry because of him. Why? What do you mean? Metaver he, Union Union Wheels. Or yeah, whatever. they did Simon. They did Woodstock boards, whatever, and they did a um, a parody of uh, I think Woodstock fighting Rocco. Oh, really? Or something like that in the ring and basically had all these world graphics in the background and basically Rocco just threw the shit out of him. Oh, wow. Which is kind of fucked up because, I mean, yeah. you know, it was just basically I'm trying to play Rocco's game. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Well, if you're going to play his game, you better play as good as him. Yeah. yeah. Man, no, Simon exactly. was ahead yeah. of his time, man. Imagine Simon what's what stuck now on Instagram. He would be killing it. Yeah. He'd have millions of followers kicking <laughs> off his shoes and yeah. doing weird Simon shit. Simon's a cool person. I mean, I got to meet him a couple of times and I think everybody loves Simon. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I never met him so, but I, I I was a fan. He was really entertaining. He, he was he was really creative. Like he would show up at all the different contests, like you know, with with some kind of different arrangement for a skateboard. Like mm -hmm. one time it was a crutch. One time he was skating a bowling ball. One yeah. time he was just you know like a skimboard. Yeah, like the whole yeah, yeah trucks on both skate. sides. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the full costume to match and stuff. Yeah. And it was awesome. Like and, totally like creative. Like, and nowadays kids on Instagram are doing the same shit. Right. You know. Right. He's a forefather of all that, Raj. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what happened with drawers? It just, I mean, they, they, they ended up folding. They're still around. Are they? Yeah, oh, no, they came back. Kind of brought well, it back a little bit. They brought yeah. it back. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I thought they were supposed to bring it back, but then, I mean, I, I it seems like they kind of set up their social media and kind of it started like they, creating they a They didn't run and then. Well, yeah, I think like they tested good. the waters to see how it do. Yeah. Mm. And like people that were stoked on, on it, you know, they were hyped on it, but I don't know if it like. Went Took big off. enough to like make production or something. Right. I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure. I'd like to see it come back. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see it come back as well. I mean, oh. you know, with uh, Damon Way too, Danny's brother, just yeah. totally creative, you know, yeah. awesome dude. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see him mm. like really bring that back. And, and, and They need the right people in charge of it for sure. Mm. Yeah, but I think, I mean, I think they could. I mean, I think they every bit could get the right people on the team. Oh, yeah. sure. Definitely. People. So you stopped skating for drawers when it when it kind of folded, right? right. You okay, right? And then what? You went to was it was X Y Z after before after drawers? That would be after after drawers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So X Y Z actually started started as a skate shop. You don't have the tattoo, Dean. No tattoos. No tattoo. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no. was everybody getting the tats? A lot of the dudes and teams that they tattoo. Oh, oh yeah, right. yeah. So no, that's, that's when that, yeah, that's when it, it that's when uh, X Y Z had turned into a, a board brand. Mm, XYZ okay. and then mm -hmm. Platinum. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Platinum. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. That's right. You brought them to the States. Yeah. But then XYZ right. was also just a clothing company, right? It turned into a board slash clothing company. Mm. Oh, okay. But before that, it was a skate shop right off of uh, Carlsbad Village Drive there. And then, so I guess when it turned into a board brand, then were you still riding for them or did that kind of XYZ? No, no. Yeah. No, it, 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 it stopped being a shop and then it right. just turned into a brand. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I just rode for the shop. Oh, you just rode for the shop? Yeah. So I, I think that's where a lot of people are confused. Like, yeah. The, the, like when the XYZ Stars and Bars video came out, mm -hmm. that was a shop video. That wasn't like a, yeah. you know, that wasn't like a oh. XYZ brand. Because they had like Jeremy Ray and everyone else in there. And... Right. Right. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I always just related it to a clothing brand. Because yeah, that, was, that was when I first saw Arto Sar. You were saying there was made a promo video and he had a partner that was like. Right. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, I remember that's 
this summer, uh, everyone was at all the Europe contests or whatever, and you know that was the t- that was the the summer that everyone. It was the introduction of Arto at that time, and it, he was all the buzz. Like he was just like <laughs> he's a dude. He was that he dude. Was the dude. Like everyone at every stop was talking about this kid, this young kid Arto. That was just like, and I remember seeing it. Like it was amazing. Like hmm. everybody was trying to talk to him. You know what I mean? It was so it was interesting that he ended up on X Y Z at that point. But he was killing it. Huh. Like he didn't even speak English no? really much at that time. Yeah. So after everything, bitch kind of dies out or whatever. I mean, were you already getting into the shoe design stuff or was that kind of after? Yeah. So that was after. And so basically what Mm. happened was, um, I got a call from Vince De La Pena, which is a pro surfer Mm. that owned and operated. If you guys remember Ezekiel clothing. Oh yeah. At that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So he, so he ran that he ran that brand and they were starting a new brand called Castell Shoes. And oh. he called me up and was like, hey, starting a new brand. We'd like you to be a part of it. We want to give you a signature shoe and give you an opportunity to design it. And, um, you know, would you be down? I'm like, yeah, let's, let's do that, please. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, go. I got on Castell, started designing my shoe and just fell in love with the process. You know what I mean? Mm. I end up turning in like, you know, 10 to 12 designs because I just couldn't stop you know you give you give you give a dude that's into fashion an opportunity to design his own signature shoe it's like okay i like this shoe i like this like you know you can't it's, it's hard you to can't kinda, just make one you can't narrow it down in right. one direction so right. i just kind of went nuts with it and end up you know um designing uh my, not only my signature shoe but like four other shoes that, oh, they, shit. that they that they selected and just wow. you know that really really fired me up you know oh. uh, with the process of, 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 of footwear design and um got into it that way and then were you drawing or was it was illustrator all, it was all hand drawn at that time gotcha. i was drawing it on grid paper and oh. um, you know with shoes um being uh sample size nines yep. is about 11 and a half inches from you know toe to to heel interesting and so it allows you to you know something that size allows you to draw it on paper to scale so you can kind of get a it's kind of a, a, a more definitive idea of... Huh, uh, so you're uh, drawing them to scale. Yes. What it would actually look like. Are you drawing like a side, a top, and a bottom, that's, that's, and a back, and a... Fr- I mean, how many... All of how it. Many, all of yeah, it. Uh, all of it. How close to the final product did they get to your drawing? Like, were you... They were got, you yeah, they got pretty damn they close. Pretty... Yeah. Yeah. You, you, were stu- you were happy with it. Yeah. No, okay. I was happy with it. It, um, it was the first skate shoe with an airbag at the time because of the trademark trademarking or whatever uh the with, nike, with nike nike had, had yeah. ran up at that time yeah and so it was perfect timing or no, the uh, the patent or the trade the, the patent the patent yes, yeah yeah. Oh. yeah the patent had, had run up or whatever they so you put that and how did you know this i didn't know that oh i just wanted an airbag on my shit i didn't <laughs> was, was worried sure. about all the logistics of shit I was okay like, I oh it just worked out perfectly yeah. Yeah. yeah so it worked out perfectly it didn't, it didn't have a, a midsole though it was a cup sole with an airbag so oh, okay. kind of heavy and just whatever huh you know completely new brand at the time and you know an experienced designer or whatever but let me ask you something though like because i had a, a uh some shoes with airbags in it but like was that really was that that was just a look it wasn't really functioned right yeah so it didn't really help you do anything you're absolutely right okay because you know because sure. i mean if you dissect those shoes i mean a lot, a lot of airbag shoes the only airbag shoes are the, are the thick nike ones you know what i mean mm-hmm. where, where they actually have room in the back of the midsole but if you want to you know a, a you know if you want something that was kind of more narrow or whatever or, or not as tall because you know you don't want a big thick ass you know midsole yeah. or whatever um you can't have that yeah it, it, it's really not the, doing much right the, yeah. the airbags the airbag molds if you, it molds if you cut that midsole in half you'll see that it's already kind of bottomed out you know mm-hmm. what i mean so it's just basically an aesthetic yeah i mean converse tried to put helium in their shoe what yeah is that gonna do yeah. work you know yeah. well you i mean know. the marketing might have worked yeah there you go. Right, <laughs> right 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 the marketing might might you know it's, oh, yeah, it's all the same thing it's like remember the reebok <laughs> pump yeah i had i, I had worked. reebok yeah. pumps pump worked for what i could have just tied your it's shoelace tight. tighter no it just inflated your uh your, your tongue. tongue yeah i had them yeah they I pumped them. Did you ever have LA Gears? I used to have those. <laughs> I used to run the LA, LA, LA Gears where they had the uh, the bent metal eyelets where you kind of would you know lace around like that. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. I don't know yeah. if you remember those. That's like forever ago. Some yeah. of the, some of the you, first. You don't LA go gear. through the hole. You just now they're like little yeah. loops, right? Like, yep. I would have loved. I would have loved that. <laughs> yeah. Now those were awesome. So much easier. British Knights had them too. Is that right? I think so. So the design process. Uh, how did the shoes do? When you, um, do you remember? From well, what I understand, they 
they did really well. They did good. Yeah, okay. they did really well. So that I must mean, have been another of, boost of confidence too. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think it was part of it was the new brand and everybody is excited about the sure. new brand and stuff like that. And you but, guys had Steve Olsen, Ricky Oyla. Yep. Yeah. Ronnie yeah. Bertino. Right. Ronnie yeah. Bertino. So, so that, was, that was the beginning of my skateboard that was a f- design career. And so I took that a couple of years um, after that, Duff's had hit me up with an opportunity to hmm. do the same thing for them, but they were going to kind of invest in me more in being able to go and take the production trips and really kind of get a firsthand um, education on the process. Go overseas, on see how the things factories. Are, you know I mean? yeah. They were going to put more responsibilities onto me to be able to really um create a a division uh, um for their for their for their line which is called the you know duff's performance okay yeah and so you know yet again you know inexperienced designer a lot of bright ideas that didn't really know was going to work or not and then also the process of footwear designs that you can have all the 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 best ideas in the world and 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 and, you know definitive uh tech packs or just Mm -hmm. whatever but it's still left to the factory's yeah interpretation Right. You know what I mean? On, on, in, in regards to what you get back. Well, that's why I was asking with the drawings, how close uh-huh. did they get to the actual shoe the, well, be, being the yeah. way that you wanted it right. and well, drew it? With, yeah. I, I mean, think, too, with your tech pack, you need to be like, it's got to be certain millimeter. One millimeter. Yeah, 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 yeah of you course. you got to be super. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Having designed footwear for the past 20 years, it's like I've, I've gotten really, you know, really good at kind of creating tech packs and mm-hmm. cross sections and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. Still the case is you could take the same tech pack, because well, we've done this, take the same tech pack and get them sampled at two different, two different factories. factories, you're going to get two, two different shoes. Two yeah. different oh, shoes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. because I mean, he, cause here's the thing, though, too. A lot of factories will, uh, instead of ask you what, asking you what your intentions were on this feature, this a lot of them will just take a guess at it. Yeah. And it's oh. left to their interpretation, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm. And, you know, but then you got, you know, you, you'll be able to kind of revise them and kind of make revisions sure, or whatever. Yeah. But sure. You won't get it right to like the fifth one. Exactly. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. But you know, a lot of times they 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 they'll, they'll accidentally do something. They do something that you weren't intending to do, but it'll look good. And you're like, I didn't ask for this, but this looks pretty sick. Like, <laughs> happy like happy mistake. Yeah, happy yeah. mistake. Exactly. Have you ever got like a shoe back the first time and like they nailed it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. For the yeah, for the most part, you're you're gonna go through at least you know back uh, and forth. Yeah. At and least three it, rounds. Doesn't it yeah. take like a month or two to get that shoe back? Even more. Depending, yeah, depending how quick the factories work. But I right. mean, yeah, you know, the turnaround could be you know could be as quick as three you know three to four weeks three or whatever. But some weeks. of them, you know, some wow. will take longer. What how did what about the Duff thing? How did that go as uh, being the designer and designing their shoes? That I mean, that went well. Well, it gave me like like I said before that I was just you know. A creative guy with you know a bunch of cool ideas that yeah. may or may not work, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so um, that really allowed me um, a firsthand education on the the, the, the process. process. You know, what I mean, going to uh, see the factory, going to see the factory, right. going to see how the molds were built and how you know uh, how the hides, you know how they all the panel, the pattern makers and all mm-hmm. that stuff. So you kind of. It helps. It, helps it, it really know. helps. So then yeah. you're like, oh, okay, that's why that wasn't possible in that other yeah. designer. That's why I couldn't, do, you know, pull that off or whatever. And mm-hmm. so, um, that really informed me, you know, uh, on on the process. And yeah. so I was able to take what I had learned there, and um, an opportunity opened up with DC shoes. Okay. When Rick Howard, Mike Carroll, and all those dudes split off and went to DVS to form so Lakai. Kind of, yeah. It, uh, so did um, the two main designers uh, at DC. Oh, they went with them, yeah. Yeah, and so I, you know, I, I saw an opportunity to jump in at DC, and I, I was able to jump in and be sure. the head designer. Okay. At uh, DC Shoes. Oh wow! And so knowing that this is this is this is what I wanted to transition into after skateboarding. Right. I took the opportunity to go work at DC because everybody, I mean, because you know, that, that's, that was the new footwear brand with all the credibility and everybody yeah. was, you know, paying attention sure. to that brand. Mm-hmm. So I felt like if I wanted to be taken seriously in this, you know, in, in this field that right. I need to go and surround myself with people that, that uh, other people were taken seriously. So, they gave me an opportunity to, you know, to go in there and, and, and be the head designer. And I was there for about a year and a half or so hmm, okay. working with DC. Doesn't seem um, like that long of a time it, within the shoe design business. It, it didn't. But in that time, I 
probably designed like over 30 SKUs, like 30, 30 like, like 30 shoes, 30 different them. shoes or 30, colorways no, for no, the same different shoes. models, different models. Yeah. I mean, I really designed snowboard boots. I designed girl shoes. I designed obviously skate shoes. Now, are you actually seeing, I mean, because a year and a half, you're talking about like designing one shoe and seeing that come back in two to yeah. four weeks, whatever you said. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Exciting that's why I said times. it doesn't sound like a lot of time to, to get another 30. They how did, how did well, that even... The, the, how shoe, game, the shoe game was different back then. Yeah. Well, well I was going to say, because you designed these ones, right? I did. The yep. Lynx HE. Yep. But back then, skate shoes were just pumping out new shoes like yeah. crazy. Yeah, dude. DC had a huge line. They were, yeah. And they did everything. You know, think about 30. it. They did snowboard boots. Sure. I mean, their whole snowboard boot line was however many you know, uh, you know know models of that. Sandals, how are you designing casuals? snowboard boots? Now you got to educate yourself on how a snowboard boots constructed. And, right. Well, and as, aesthetically, I know what I, I knew what I liked. I knew what I wanted. Sure. I knew I knew what the direction was kind of informed by. Okay. And uh, from there, you know, they had they had the developers kind of really guide me along what, of what with what gotcha. worked and what what didn't. Huh. You know what I mean, as far as the technicalities of designing a snowboard boot. It sounds like back then you were kind of. Uh, the samples were coming back like you were getting a bunch of them at the same time. Oh yeah, like you were working on different shoes, multiple all. projects seems like a, at a yeah. time. Yeah, for oh, sure. It seems like you're you're overextending yourself. No, dude. I mean, when you're just thrilled at the you know the opportunity okay. and you just love footwear design. Like I said, I mean, I had an opportunity to design my own signature shoe, and I just I you went crazy. It went crazy, right. and so now here I'm here I am given an opportunity to design for one of my favorite footwear brands. I'm going nuts. So I had no light you know, bar at That's... any, at any design review meeting. I had way more, you know, concepts than any of the other designers. Oh, okay. So I was just like, you know, still I mean? drawing or now you've moved so, illustrator. So when I ended up at DC, that's when they had first started uh, submitting tech packs via illustrator. Gotcha. They had just started doing that. And hmm. so it kind of forced me to have to learn that. But before that, it was all through facts, you know, oh. sketching, faxing it over Damn. and getting it back. And so what I would do back in those days was I would just draw line art, okay, make copies, and go in with markers and oh, kind of. You know, that's how we did go. tech packs. But fax thing. isn't color though, right? Still, you have to but, say blue. Yeah, and you have to write right. down the colors. Yeah, you right? have to kind of write them down or whatever, and huh. you know, send them over. Interesting. But um, yeah, getting into DC, that's kind of when they had started submitting tech packs wow. via Illustrator, and so I was kind of forced to. And now you got to learn, learn that, and it's a whole thing. Yeah, and I was intimidated as hell because it's like. Um, I did at that point, I really didn't even know how to turn on the computer yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. I always wanted to learn or whatever. And I had already gotten a computer. Thank you on layers though. Yeah. But I, I had I already had a computer for like maybe a year and a half, two years at my house. Never turned it on. We just didn't know how to use the shit. Yeah. Right. right. I just knew that that was the future and I needed to fucking learn that shit. Yeah. So go get a computer. And, and it, I was just so intimidated. But you know, like I said, I was forced to be able to, to have to kind of learn it. Sure. And, um, as intimidated as I was, I learned it pretty quick. Pretty quick. I learned, I learned, I, I learned what I needed to know in about a good half hour of someone standing over my shoulder telling me this is this and this and this, this is that. Right. This tool does this, and then from there, after you kind of know the gist of it, right. you can kind of build you off of fill, you, yeah. you can build off that knowledge and kind of because you're only maybe else. using like maybe two or three tools. Right. You're using a couple layers. Yeah, it's the, very the pen tool basically. Y- right. Yeah. Kind of you're not path, using every tool, tool in the yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Seriously. Yeah. And then if you don't know something, then you have somebody there you could ask. Right. right? Yep. Yeah. And now you can do it all on an iPad Pro. Yep. So DC a year and a half. What happened? Why? Why? So. Did you, Why'd you leave? I was at DC for a year and a half. And then from there, I started getting, you know, a, a lot of opportunities from other brands that wanted, that wanted me to design for mm. them as well. I'm like, you know what? I wanted, because, okay, so when, when I was there, there was also, DC also had, um, was also utilizing a, uh, a, another freelance designer. Okay. That was doing work for other brands as well. And so mm. after a while, I was like, you know, getting a lot of requests from other brands to be able to design shoes. I'm like, well, I can make this into my own business and kind of really, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and so they gave me the opportunity to do that while still, you know, um, working with DC. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, win, win. Check out the new S shoe I did. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what other companies were hitting you? Where, what other companies did you uh, work for? I've worked for everyone from Reef. Uh, I did some work with Roxy. There was a oh, brand wow. called in LA called Dada Dimani. Mm. Um Gravis, I did um, one of uh, Dylan Reader's pro model shoes, the oh, one, wow. the the loafer with the razor blade mm-hmm. okay. on it. Yeah. Sick. So I mean, in the twenty plus years I've been designing footwear, I've I've worked for over twenty brands. How yeah, many shoes do you think in total? Over over a hundred, well over a hundred. Um, 
I mean, you just said 30 with DC. 30, yeah, 30 for D, with DC alone. So well over 100, well over with 100 all the, shoes. All the brands. That's been on the shelf. Brands. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And you never went to school for anything like that, too. It's all just, no. you developed it over time? No, yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there was no school for footwear design at, <laughs> yeah. at, at, at that time. You know but what I mean? is it there? Was, it was, is there now? I think there's an, uh, there, there, there's what's called the, uh, the pencil academy, which I think is somewhat of a footwear design, oh. you know, uh, institute or school or whatever yeah crazy yeah That's but i mean back then it was it was it was them. yeah it was like i mean you you kind of you you kind of knew what you liked you know mm-hmm. what i mean and there was different references you know that 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 you know people were excited about and kind of taking you know bits and pieces and being inspired by kind of things that you you know saw around that coupled with the first-hand experience of going to the factories and understanding the process right helped to inform me on what was you know what was possible and what was crazy not. Mm-hmm. yeah i love it bro what was your favorite shoe you ever designed um, Do you have one? Shoe? I, I know it's like I, naming your I favorite kinda, kid, but I kind of don't. I kind of don't. No, have no kid. You don't I, mean, have I, I, I really liked I, that the shoe that you brought up, the Lynx HE that I designed. This is a good shoe, dude. That definitely brings up a lot of rad memories. Okay. That's probably one of my favorites. Uh, I skated a lot of these ones. These are another great. another one that wasn't. I, I don't credit you know uh, to any kind of design genius or whatever. It was a really sure. basic shoe called the Court. Was the top the, the top top selling shoe for DC. D- the DC Court. The was DC Court. The, the, you know, the, the logo? super basic, yeah. It had a big logo on the side, right? That's it. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Mm. It was kind yeah. of a p- simple shoe, like more simple. It but was it had just, a... Yeah, it was, there's was nothing to it. Just a, you know, yeah. real basic shoe. But, you know, it was uh, it was a, one of their top selling shoes that they kind of created a whole segment around. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I remember that. Yeah. Do you have a shoe you're embarrassed by? Oh, I mean, that's just, that's kind of a part of the job. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about Duff's performance. I mean, that was kind of my experimental stage of kind of like, you know, I, I think these are good ideas and just do this. You know, I'm going to do this and whatever. And, you know, you get it back and you're like, okay, part of it is because of it's a bad idea. And the other part is the, you know, the, the, the factory's execution of it. And, yeah. But I mean, all of it, all, all of it is worth something. All of it, you know, all of it I've learned Learning from. Learning experience. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, I've, I, I've, I've been doing that for over 20 years now and i'm still doing it still i still doing it yeah um i, I i'm working on a, a pretty cool project now with some cool people uh mm. um called anomaly I, okay there, you know there, there's some uh there, a cool friend of mine oh. contacted me starting a new brand called anomaly skate footwear brand oh dope and um Wait, I'm where having, have i heard of that i think i've heard yeah i just saw the, the instagram recently yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. so they, they have an instagram uh anomaly spelled a n m L Y, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, on Instagram, and okay. I think there's like uh, there. I, I just love working with awesome people, and yeah, those guys are really is that awesome. Like Going to be a skate brand, or is it? Just... Yeah, yeah, they're looking mm. to do a skate brand, and um, you know, um, kind of expand, you know, beyond that, just kind of mm. with the, with like kind of their marketing message and kind of doing more creative marketing and stuff like that. But really cool, really awesome people to wow. work with. They had like a an Instagram like of, of a. A shoe like splitting like a log, or something right? Like that. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of some of the old uh, airwalk campaigns that they had back in the day. That was really oh, creative. That yeah. you know, kind of really helped uh, airwalk get to the size that they they got to. I think yeah. there's a lot of really cool, awesome people working with that brand. A lot of creative minds. I, uh, mm. I'm really, um, I'm really excited to work with those dudes. And I have got other so a couple of other projects that I oh. can't mention now. Uh oh. That I'm that I got bubbling, but I think it's gonna. I think people will be pretty shocked to see kind of really what, Louis Vuitton what, shoe. Is that some swoosh, some you, stripes? Dude. What do you got? Yeah, that? what's going some on? Some swoosh, some stripes. I, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. I, a- I can't S? say. No? Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, you, you let me know. Oh uh, yeah, you I'll, pull I'll some strings. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hey, it, it's footprint. Holler if there was, me. if there was. One company you could design a shoe for. What would be? What would be your dream company? The company that I'm kind of really. Hopefully, uh, I've, I've got some things kind of brewing Let with. Let me try to think know. about that. What do I wonder? What it is. Maybe go yard? No, it, it's it's just too early to say because yeah. it may or may not happen. But oh, I mean, we, okay. I've been having I've been having some pretty cool conversations that's hmm. leading me to believe Sketchers. that it's probably going Sketchers, to happen. Right? That, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but I mean, but to that, as a footwear designer, it's like I mean, I I, I appreciate brands that kind of are, Tommy Hilfiger you know, that are there. You go. Oh, that's, uh, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> but um, no, I, I but I, you appreciate I I appreciate successful footwear brands that sure. have gotten to where they have gotten from making the right decision and, and, and you know Skechers is one that trips me out yeah 
It trips me out. <laughs> I, I, like how, I, how they is built this, their brand on I, stealing everyone else's silhouettes. They, I mean, yeah, they did. I, I've never done no work for for uh, Skechers, but sure. I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by how you can you know how it's you can get to that size. Yeah, like, you they're know. huge. Yeah, Might but I mean, them. listen, bro. I'm gonna. I'm sure we'll find out sooner or later yeah. who you're uh, working for, and I'll know. That that's know. your favorite. You'll I mean, not to, your favorite, but your dream. Tune into my Instagram. I'll, tune I'll, in. I'll let you know. Right. As soon as, as soon as the, I get the thumbs up, okay. we're moving forward. It's on. It, it's almost. It's hard. It's hard not to. You know, I know. Not to tell you guys. I, now, just whis- I'm, whispered. I'm, I'm excited it. about it, but just whispered. It maybe like. just. Uh, maybe I've already even just said too much. Okay. You know. Okay. So. Speaking of your Instagram, speaking of design stuff, everybody skates. Everybody skates. I love this. Thank you. You take. I mean, look, we got your artwork all around. We got the, the this and the that and the, this <laughs> over there. We got, a, we got everything this here. This is amazing, right. by the way. Oh, thank you, you man. I appreciate that. Hands. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, I so mean, that's all my hand done and embroidery yeah. art. Takes each one, like the bigger ones, the bigger ones take about a week, week and a half to do. It's all hand woven, hand stitched. It's insane. And that's so, beautiful. and Thank you know you. what, learning that just on your own, mm-hmm. it's phenomenal. The detail in like the people's muscles and the, the horses, limbs right. and everything. It's, right. it's incredible, bro. How do you learn? You know what? I like, there was, there was not a point of reference for me when I started YouTube? doing this. No. Bro, so how to make a horse. So and basically. <laughs> To hang out with the uh, retirement home. I know. <laughs> Basically, yeah. what inspired that was I, I was going to set up a, a trade show. Yeah. I was tasked with designing my trade show booth for the trade show. Okay. And I was, I'm, you know, everybody skates is known for doing these embroideries, like it's on my hat, yeah. stuff like that. Um, that's kind of what I've evolved the brand to, you know what I mean? That, but, but you put iconic people on, in, or just right. images, in, skateboarding. That's yes. the whole concept yes. of everybody The, the whole concept of, my, uh, of everybody skates is basically popular culture beats skateboarding. There you go. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And so to back up a little bit, how it started was, let me really back up. So go ahead. Yeah. It started basically when I got on social media, I got on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I initially didn't want nothing to do with Instagram or social media. I don't really put my personal business, whatever out there, but my idea was I, I, I was kind of following uh, YouTube or like, a, um, you know, reading some of the comments on the internet, like, oh, whatever happened to this guy and this and that, whatever. Mm-hmm. So my idea was like, okay, let me start a social media, you know, so so I can kind of show show off some of my footwear designs sure. and, you know, hopefully that can, you we know, more work. I can get more work from doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so it went from that to really quickly, um, my good friend Vinny Ponte <laughs> and Danny Supa getting on uh, Instagram as well. And so it went from me trying to show my footwear design work and kind of, you know, being professional about it. It went from that to me and Danny and Supa just being class clowns and just clowning each other. Talking <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Which so, is like very entertaining, by the way. Yes. Very, oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we had such a great time. We were just <laughs> no holds bar, just fucking clowning each other. Like, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, me photoshopping or at that time, we I was basically... Yeah, well, tree for it. I mean, I, I, that we'll was just really keep. Let's go. Let's go with this. Keep yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. He's on a good roll here. So yeah. it 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 went from me showing my footwear design mm-hmm. on social media to like Talking these guys shit. got on. So we're just clowning each other. Yeah. I'm I'm starting to kind of edit images uh, of uh, and, and and just kind of making little memes or whatever with Supa and 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 uh, Ponte and, and and Ponte. Yeah. And um, Ponte Vinny had moved to Mexico, <laughs> right? Because okay. he had he met some girl in, in Mexico, so he had moved there. He got a job uh, selling timeshares or whatnot, and I guess apparently they fed him fucking free <laughs> beer and, like, you know, free <laughs> food or whatever. So he had gained, you know, quite a few LBs. Okay. And so I started calling him Fat Bastard, <laughs> right? And so I'm searching on... Uh, on the internet and finding pictures of fat bastard. Right. And I saw a rad picture of fat bastard kind of standing like this. Uh-huh. And so my idea right away went to like, Oh man, I should, I got to mock him onto a skateboard sliding down a rail or whatever. Sure. And make some kind of caption that kind of points, you know, refers to, to Vinny, f- to Vinny right. being fat bastard <laughs> and how he's gained all this weight, but he still has it or whatever. And so I did that and it seemed like everybody was getting kick, getting a kick out of it. And I just kind of kept on that path and started doing that. And so it got a lot of it got a lot of attention. And what I did, what I noticed, it it was kind of the the concept that I had created was beginning to market itself. Sure. Everybody was reposting it. And um, who's the the tattoo girl? The, Kat Von D or her. something? Oh, really? Yeah, she? she had posted the Smith Grind one that I did and all this stuff. And no so no way. I started thinking like, wow, 
this stuff is, you know, this could be something like, you know, people, it, it, this is something that basically markets itself. It has reach, yeah. This point right? in time, you're, yeah. you're not making any product. There was no intention to even, even do that at She's all. She's repo. It was, wow. Okay. It, was, it wasn't until I was getting a lot of, you know, comments from people like, yo, sure. what are you, what is this? What are you doing? You should put these on t-shirts. You right. know, I'd buy it, you know, whatever. And so I was like, <laughs> wasn't really interested at first because I, you know, I'm, you know didn't know nothing about business or the legalities of this or whatever. But right. after I heard it, you know, you kept on hearing it. I was like, maybe I should build some t-shirts. Yeah. You know what I mean, at Absolutely. least to supply the demand on social media and see what people think or whatever. Make a couple extra bucks. And yeah. And so I went, I went ahead and made a few designs and end up getting the attention of, uh, of uh, Supreme, actually, you know my buddy Javi, Javi, Hav, that, yeah. That, yeah, Javi that works at Supreme was like, "Yo, we got to get your shirts in here." I'm like, well, you are what <laughs> in Supreme? <laughs> I'm like, okay, like fuck, you know, what I mean, because wow. it's like I know how you know you can't just fucking powerful. show up sure. and get into Supreme. So yeah. if you got an opportunity to get your shit into Supreme, right, you better take you know take the opportunity to do that. And so um, I started making shirts and you know got into got in Supreme and just you know been Crazy. doing it ever since. But like. You know, kind of, kind of keeping it at my own pace. I know what I'm dealing with, so I'm kind of keeping it, you know, at my own pace and kind of, you know, not making not sure, overextending yourself, not overextending right. myself, and kind of yeah. it, it's it's mainly a, it's it's real exclusive. I keep it exclusive, and it's you know basically small bit, runs, small maybe. runs, okay, exclusively you know online at everybodyskates.com. Sure. com, okay, and um, yeah, it's just been an awesome, fun, creative outlet for me, it's and amazing. you know, it seems like it's it's one of those things where it's like if you like to smile. You like to laugh, like you know, you, you're gonna like what I'm doing. You know what oh, I, mean? I I love it. Are you kidding me? And so, uh, yeah, I, it, a lot of it started off with like photoshopped images, mm -hmm. and so I started to think like, you know what? You know, a, a big part of the of, of the narrative of everybody skates is me as the designer and and the artist or whatever. It's like I need to start kind of drawing these ideas because sure. it's gonna allow me to kind of do more with it as in, in, as opposed to kind of being at the mercy of the quality of the images that I'm able to find online. Yeah, yeah sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll find cool images and I'm like, oh, I want to do this so bad, but the Too fucking small. the quality of the images yeah. isn't you know. But now I'm starting to kind of draw it. You know, I'm, I'm starting sure. to illustrate them, and uh, well, especially with these, uh, this, uh, what, what, what is uh, crochet? What is this? Uh, <laughs> it's just hand, uh, hand, hand woven, and hand woven, 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 woven right? Yeah, and so I, I, I found that um, that these little embroideries also, the, my concept also translated in these little embroideries and started, mm -hmm. you know, and then also allowed me to kind of expand what I was offering in, 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 in being able to make hats and, yeah. you know, little embroideries on, 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 you know, uh, hoodies or whatnot right, right. for the person that does, might, might not want a big Beagle. graphic on their shirt. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. And so, um, I was attending a trade show and was tasked with kind of designing a trade show booth okay. for everybody skates. And so I started thinking like, what would be the most effective way to kind of showcase these little embroideries that I'm doing? Yeah. And I just kind of devised the idea of That's like, insane. okay, I can kind of, you know, I can kind of, exp I can kind of utilize canvas and yarn to kind of blow up what you've already em been doing yeah, in little my embroideries, designs. right? And um, you know, it was trial by error, but there was no reference. I mean, it was just me coming up with the idea, trying it out, and it worked. Huh? And um, took it to the trade show, and that seemed to be people the the center of attraction and um it i end up kind of winning like the booth the, like the booth of the show or whatever <laughs> yeah, at, at one of the sure. trade shows at one of the trade shows that i attended you know, you know from a, a agenda game yeah. like booth of the of the tr show or whatever and it was because of these little no embroidery things and people were stopping by kind of writing stories about them and everything and so i just kind of kept on that path and started creating these That's embroideries great. and you know kind of creating a body of work and mm -hmm. having little art shows and stuff with them and uh it's great bro you know now some of these uh, pieces um you know uh, they're in uh, galleries uh, in la and a, a buddy of mine uh, actually has a gallery um in la and he manages some of my art wow and uh That's yeah incredible a guy by the name of uh, jacob ryan and um yeah so some of this stuff uh, i had to reborrow from him from his from the from the gallery right right let's go for air uh, those are like six grand. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. And I mean, the, the price was kind of already set because um, uh, before I started doing shows and placing a price on them, um, I had gotten accepted by uh, by a boutique in L.A. called oh, Church Boutique. Okay. And all their stuff is like outrageously priced and stuff. And so sure. even for six grand, that's kind of a, a, a value. bargain, yeah. a bargain yeah. for like right. what the, the stuff that they that, that, that they sell in there. Yeah. Because they, it's one of those places like it's like haute couture like you know fucking mm -hmm. you know fancy stuff that like i guess lenny kravitz shops in there quite a bit and oh. uh, um 
uh, LeBron James. Do you want any celebrities uh, on these? Um, Nick Diamond. Oh, Nick, Nick, but, he's but, kind of a celebrity, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, um, did he pay full price? No, I. Oh come <laughs> on, bro. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's Nick Diamond. That's the homie. He could have. He gave it, some bro. canary yellow. That's, yeah, that's that's <laughs> the homie. It's like I, you know, I I I was thrilled to death to to give him sure. one because I thought. It would be, you know, he would be a perfect person to have. But you know what, though? I mean, in the art world, mm -hmm. like, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. You got to start, you know, even you see, like, it, six grand is a bargain, I think, for mm -hmm. this, you know? Yeah. But as your name and your art right. goes up and certain people start owning it, right? that's when you're really, you're, you're going to be selling these things for forty, fifty thousand dollars 50000 I mean, after the nine show, you know, you know I mean, hey. my price is over <laughs> you here. You know what I'm saying? Dude. I'm selling myself short over maybe here. You can, you, maybe bro. you can knit uh, Chris's Switch Lip Switch Manual. Oh, you know do, what? Oh. Do I smell a collab? That's right. God damn, do I smell a collab? <laughs> hey, man. It's a lot of work for you. But, I think you know, I smell it, uh, dude. I think I smell it. We'll, we'll, split, like we'll split the profits, bro. Let's <laughs> you know what I'm at, saying? Let's get at this paper. We'll <laughs> <laughs> no, but the art world is super interesting to me because it's mm -hmm. just the way that it works, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't just paint something and then go try to sell it for X amount. You're just right. going to fucking buy that thing. Right. But I, I learned this, like, how... The more that more people own it, and the more that more recognizable people exactly. own it, maybe maybe some art people own stuff. Right. The word gets out. Oh, this guy. Oh, I, everybody's. Oh, I gotta get one of those. Right. Well. Right. They were six. Now they're fifty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I love it, bro. We're working yeah. on it. Well, thank you so it's, much it's, for our new art here in the, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of money right here, guys. I yeah. uh, know. We're, We're definitely going to roost Chris. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it to you 30 but, day uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, so you basically made this out of a necessity for doing right. the, the trade show booth. Right. It looks like it takes, yeah, a lot of time, dude. It does take quite a bit of time. And, you know, with each one, I kind of learn something new. Yeah, yeah, of course. Up until I've the I've never seen anything like this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I said, either did I. But once I started doing them and posting them, I was getting a lot of old ladies that I guess you know a lot of grandmas and stuff oh, the doing, the doing them in the, in the, with with like regular thread and the round little thing, or right? Whatever. But um, so you got an old lady following. Hey, you know. What yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> I love get, in, it. get in where you fit in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you should release limited edition fat bastard shirts where it all started from. Yes. Vinny Ponty, Fat Bastard. Skating shirts. the Flat Earth. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Look at you. There you I like go. how you think. Yeah, yeah. I like how you I'm think. I'm telling you, limited, <laughs> you got to bring it back to the roots, man. Show everybody where it started. Right. No, I think it's I think it's rad to have told this story because I think now now people are able to make the connection. I think right. it's a pretty funny story. Yeah. But that's... Well, a, that's and, and, and also it being connected with Vinny Ponte, who's a good friend of mine as well. I mean, he's a great dude. Awesome great dude. dude. Yeah. Right. But I mean, it's just... It's just rad that just something started as a joke mm -hmm. and then just kind of turned in. I mean, then Kat Von D is posting right. the stuff. And then, I mean, look at you now, yeah. you know? Well, Kat, I, like, I don't think Kat Von D didn't even know what it was at the time. I just, someone had tagged me on it like, yo, this is, you know, whatever. And I looked at who it was. And, but that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, no, it's... That's, so that's Alf. what I'm saying. That's kind of that's when I knew, like, there's something to there's this. There's something people there. Are, people are drawn to this, you know what I mean? And... The number one question I get is like, do you ever get cease and desist or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, right. yeah. And, and I've been fortunate not to, except for, you know, uh, I won't even mention it, but I mean, I, I, I haven't gotten any, uh, I haven't gotten any trouble from it. Mm. It's like actually to the contrary. It's like I get a lot of celebrities supporting what I'm doing. I mean, Interesting. I'll, I'll wake up to people tagging me like, yo, look at Lil Wayne, just tag, you know, just, you know, uh, posted everybody no skates way. or Nicki Minaj, um, wow. Dana wow. White, you know what I mean? And like all these different people. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's a trip. People are really, it's, it's the universal language of humor. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. People, people like to smile. People oh, like yeah. to laugh. And it's just the, it's almost like the juxtaposition of the subjects and the characters that I use, like skateboarding. Sure. I think it brings sure. a smile to people's face. And that's, that's what I'm here to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I love ain't nothing it. too serious out here. What's a thought process? Do you find like a, like an icon or an image or, I mean, do you think of something before and be like, I got to go Google this person or, and find something? Well, yeah. Or do you just search on the Google? Do you just type in celebrities? Sometimes, just... I mean, it works all kinds of ways. Sometimes I'll have a particular subject in mind yeah. and then, you know, um, I'll try to find the best reference images that I can. And sometimes the expressions on their face kind of does it all. But now... Yeah. Now I've got more of a range of what I'm able to kind of do now that I'm actually illustrating them 
I'm kind of getting oh, better at kind of, you know, kind of okay. creating a realistic looking, you know, uh, character. Oh, so like, you're drawing them I'm now. Actually, I'm actually drawing them now, yeah. And so it started, I started off drawing them with uh, uh, Prisma colors and color pencil. Okay. But now, as a matter of convenience, I've been kind of drawing them on my iPad. Because what, what was happening before is like, when, you're, when I'm drawing with markers, like the Prisma colors that I have, like, they, uh, they run out of ink. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. pretty quick. And I got to replace them. And each marker is like Expensive. fucking seven bucks. Oh and yeah. and then yeah. also I'm working with a, in, in a small space. So I have these big ass containers of markers. And then I'm doing them on like a maybe a tabloid uh, sized piece of paper. So oh. it just gets to be a mess anytime I start a project. And right. um, I just found it was more efficient and cost effective to do them on, a, on, a, on an iPad because all the colors exist right there in the iPad. Yeah. Like every, every different. And you can get as stroke. detailed as you want on the right. iPad. Right. Oh, yeah. I guess you could zoom it in and then do a line. You absolutely and can, yeah, and all the different oh. textures and stuff like that. So I'm having a lot of fun. And then, like I said, it, it, it allows me more creative freedom, huh. you know what I mean, as opposed to, you know, um, being at the mercy of the uh, the images that are accessible to me. I'm kind of basically creating my I vision. Feel, yeah, I feel you like know, you were creating art before but now you're really creating art right you're drawing everything right. by hand because because I mean, you know quite naturally when something catches on you're gonna yeah. have other people doing it you know what i mean yeah. and, and, and right and more people could probably use photoshop than they can actually illustrate oh no totally, totally. So i've already started have, to photoshop a bunch of stuff is that I'm, right i'm coming for you bro you in, should do, in, split, in, let's, in, let's split the check everybody else skates <laughs> that's my yeah, yeah, there you go <laughs> <laughs> i like it <laughs> in the beginning though weren't you like taking um like photographs and then trying to do a trick, whatever, and then put your body on. It wasn't just my body. I mean, it was just yeah. kind of whatever, you know, whatever, you know, like here's, here's the thing. What I never did was I never just took someone's head and put it on a skate body. Yeah. I yeah. just thought that was kind of cheating. That's it cheating. Kind of, like the right. body has to kind of say something, speak a certain language yeah. where I could look at that and be like, okay, right. That's a back of the lip slide. Or that's a front side tail side or yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and so a that was kind flip. of a that was kind of a part of the creativity. And from there, I would kind of um, you know uh, try, try to reference like you know whatever tricks that I feel like huh. that body position is in. Yeah. And so that, that that was kind of a, you know a big part of the creative element uh, to me. No, doing I mean you do a good job. I mean the tray shot. flip right there. Yeah, this one is one of my one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I mean, man. Muhammad Ali. One thing. There you so, go. so so. I actually reshot this myself. This, yeah. the, this, these are my legs. Those are le your legs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Muhammad Ali's legs would definitely be bigger than my little. Okay. Bone, oh yeah, <laughs> I get him out. Yeah, he's yeah. wearing uh, Castells too. Is that a, <laughs> is that, no. Is that which which is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dutch performance. Oh yeah. 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 You'd be great. Is you do one of Chris and Larry David is a face. Ooh. That oh. would that would be a sick one, dude. There you go. The nose grind at the courthouse. I mean, you kind of see his face. You gotta find those right yeah. images of Larry David. Yep. Yeah. Collab. Let's do this, baby. Let's, I'm no. telling you, dude. That'll be so. That would actually be amazing. Let's get this. I'm gonna have a woven frame up. In the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's How long does one of those take you to do? About a week, week and a half. Week and Depending. a half. Yeah. Because okay, so eight hours okay, a day. Maybe. Look at no. the uh, look at the Muhammad Ali one. Right. Yeah, I see it. Um, right. You know what took a lot of time is is the ropes in the background, the the blue ropes that you can kind of see it's it's tonal. Oh, I wouldn't I would have, would have never yeah. guessed yeah, that because rego it, it, you would never guess that because yeah. like the 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 stroke the is probably you know like a half an inch thick, right? Okay. But yep. regardless if it's a half an inch thick or if it's you know a foot thick, it, each pass is what kind of takes you the time, right? So you're going the whole so yeah, you're, but you're doing that last, right? Um. Because there's, he, he's over it. He's, it's going to be tough just to keep it straight. He's in the yeah. foreground, so you got to... Well, he probably uses a ruler. He draws it, draws it yeah, out, I, right? I Yeah, mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate it but, on there first, and mm -hmm. then kind of... You know, sometimes I'll go back and forth from, like, the, you know, the rope to, like, you know, the leg or just whatever. You switch it around. I could, yeah. I could see how that could be the, the, the most tedious. Yeah. You're sitting there one by one by one yeah, by one. Yeah, You're not sure. really creating. You're just doing the straight line. You're right. Right? right. It's like... At least with his muscles or something, you're actually creating some definition. Right. You're, you're working with it. Man, I love it, bro. Thank you. Yeah, I have a lot of fun doing it. I've, like I said, I've, I've, it's the same things that drives me to do those type of things. It's the, it's the same, it, that's the same type of creativity that drove me to skateboarding. Yeah. It's mean, yeah. the freedom to create and kind of, you there know, figure is. things out yeah. and shit. And so I've always. Just even doing the mat. It's right. that? Like the actual mat of the right. ring, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, yeah. I just had the idea to separate that material yeah. mm -hmm. and, and and have a have a white material for the, the mat part to kind of make it stand out. Brings the whole piece together, man. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs>
What kind yeah. of wheels are those, man? Spitfire? <laughs> what are you working with here? Like, just bro? even like the, the, the laces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the boots, right. you know? Like. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, though. The little things pop out at you, you know? I think I have a pair of socks like that. Wait, who is this one over here? Uh, it's like pouring the champagne or... Oh, so that one was actually inspired by a picture that I saw of, of P. Diddy on the uh, on the internet, and he was apparently, you know, he in, in a, a mink coat, like, <laughs> pouring bottles, <laughs> and I thought, oh, man, that would be perfect for, to have him doing that and grinding on a ledge or something. That's on, amazing. Grinding on a table. So sick. Raj, did you want to ask about the tree fort, or should I... Oh, you have a question for tree fort? No, I, was, you, I wanted to know about tree fort. Ask him about tree fort. Well, Raj, you and... <laughs> You want to know about tree fort so bad? Ask you him. wanted to know. You should ask him. No, you wanted to know about tree fort. Roger's, Roger's drunk. Dude. I know. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> These guys, just, the pale ale just appeared on the table. Yeah. Listen, Alf, Roger blurted out, we didn't even talk about tree fort right. earlier. Right. What about tree fort? <laughs> Do you have anything to say about tree fort? I think the only cool thing I remember about tree fort is basically being teammates with Vinny Ponte and, and, and Danny Supa. Yeah. They were, Hey, great people. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome is that where you met them? No, I, I, I actually introduced Vinny to Troy. Oh, okay. And um, so before that, the industry was kind of mad at Troy because he was... Making blank boards. Making blank boards under the brand name Cloud9. Hmm. And then so he comes to me and asks me to put together a team. Do I know anybody that you know he, I can get involved that would kind of legitimize what he was doing and so i introduced him to Vinny, and then we started kind of forming a team out of that and then got on was supposed to do this that and the other after shortly after i got on oh we can't do this that and the other mm-hmm. and uh you know it was kind of one of those empty promises not ever fulfilled type uh-huh. of things but then it went from tree fort to expedition then no it really didn't uh, oh it didn't expedition thought... expedition is actually something that chris lambert and i started oh a bit of a t- touchy subject but if you want to know about okay. it i mean uh, you know it's up to you so basically what happened was lambert and i started expedition mm. which turned into ko which turned into everything else that you chris's know. dad funded a lot of money right so oh. chris's dad was supposed to fund yeah. the company and for whatever reason it never ended up happening hmm. but um i knowing a guy named troy morgan mm-hmm. brought him along because uh, i had history with him thinking hey this you know i can trust this guy sure um let's bring him along he can manage it and it will allow us to skate and do what we're good at and we brought uh shanny and richard on and so the idea was that you know let's let's divide the company. We all have equal shares of it because it's new board company, no right. budget. We're just basically living off of the credibilities of our name and being able to grow the name brand. Mm-hmm. And, um, I had convinced Lambert to take on Troy you know, to manage the, the company and okay, help, help gotcha. grow it so that, you know, we don't, we don't know much about running a board brand. Let's do what we're good at and uh, hire someone else that's familiar with managing a company mm-hmm. to manage the company. Cause you already treat for it. Right. Time. And I had to kind of convince Lambert because okay. Lambert didn't really trust Troy. He heard a whole bunch of bad things, this mm. and that, whatever. But I figured oh you know, what it's, it's, it, you know, what, what's the worst that can happen? Sure. Oh boy. Oh boy. We were kind of on a good vibe, up, uh, you know, up up to now. So I, I just kind of touch on it. So long story short, basically, Lambert and I were pushed out mm. of the very company we started. We oh, didn't, wow. like I said, we didn't know much about running a brand or whatever. So I got brought this guy Troy in, right? And uh, as it turned out, he pulled some shit off and just kind of being being really secretive mm. about the information. You know what I mean? Right. With uh, um, expedition. And every time we'd ask him something, he would kind of dodge and try to hide it, whatever. And with me, I'd, I was already kind of taken off on my footwear design career, so I didn't really need the, the funds. And so okay. I was kind of just, whatever, you know, detaching myself. Hopefully, you know, when it comes time to really need something, you know, we will build it and this can kind of mean something to us later type of there thing. There you go. That was my, my, my mindset. Right. Um, long story short, um, after a while, it's like, we didn't have the percentages that we all agreed to, oh. you know what I mean? And, 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 you know, we always had this discussion of like, oh man, you know, we're, we're struggling, but when we make it, man, you guys are going to see how hard I worked to get us here and do this and do that, whatever. And, uh, um, it, it 
KO actually got to a point where I mean there there was some financial freedom that he you know that that, that sure. we could have all gotten taken care of. But once we got there, it was like no nobody got any love. Oh, like wow. Shani was working as a fucking team manager with Shani Shani Jinkwin and come you know Shani. I love Shani. The fucking coolest guy ever. <laughs> Funniest whatever. dude. Yeah, if, he's if hilarious. If Shani doesn't like you, you're doing fucking something wrong. With <laughs> yeah, your life, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. And so. It got to this point where they're, you know, popping bottles and they're making good money. You know, sure. some of it was, you know, a lot of it was DGK or whatever. But I mean, none of that stuff could have happened without um, Expedition, which turned into KO. I named KO. Oh, wow. And um, it, uh, you know, once things started flowing, it, like no one got any love. Like yeah. Lambert, Lambert fell into hard times and, you know, was looking for a position anywhere. Like hmm. give, give the dude a fucking, you know, job in the warehouse shipping shit or just right. whatever. Sh- uh, Shanny had to not only team manage, but ride as a pro and all that stuff and was getting fucking, you know, chump change while, mm-hmm. you know, he was watching other people that kind of, you know, snuck in, you know, getting taken care of, like sure. way better than some of the original dudes that were there that helped to, you know, establish this thing. So, um, you know, it, it was just one of those things where, you know, some guy that kind of was a little bit more familiar with business com- comes in and just kind of, you know, push S- pushes out, it, yeah. yeah, pushes mm-hmm. pushes the the dudes that gave him the opportunity to begin with right right we gave him the opportunity and then he basically kind of huh did his thing to us so it's kind of a bitter yeah it's kind of a bitter thing but i mean to put it in more context it's like troy he's he, you know he's he's come to me on several times in our history mm. you know for help he'd gotten into some trouble at some point Mm-hmm. Needed a place to live so he can hide out because people were after him. Oh, okay, wow! We won't get into that. Okay, but so I'm like, sure, you can come and live with me and Lambert. I mean, not Lambert, me and uh, Costin at oh, the yeah. time. Okay, you know, and endanger our lives <laughs> with whatever <laughs> bullshit you got going on. Right. And so, um, and then something happens. I, I go to Woodward, whatever, and he ends up moving out, whatever, and you know, not telling nobody. Uh-huh. Like, okay, cool, whatever, we're cool. And then he. Uh, is working at a surf shop in Oceanside, gets fired from that, comes to me and is like, oh man, I just got fired, man. Can you, you know, can you hook me up, help me out? I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I got some buddies that are starting a skate shop called XYZ. I'll get you a job there. Oh. Got him a job there. This is all before. This is, this all is way before. before. Yeah. 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 This is me putting into context why, like, why it's kind of, why well, well, my feelings are a little uh, hurt up here. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah why yeah, I kind yeah, of yeah. feel a little taken advantage yeah. of you know, from somebody that I felt was a good buddy of mine. There you you go. know what I'm saying? Right. And so got him a job at XYZ mm-hmm. when things weren't working out at his current job. Got fired. Something went wrong there. He was button heads with the people that worked at XYZ. Who does he come to to help to come save the day again? Me. Right. I need another job. These things aren't working out. XYZ. I get him a job at 8th Street, which is evil at that oh, time. Oh, okay. Huh. And then from there, you know, you know that that didn't work out, and so he ended up. I think at that at, at that point, um, was that when Evil was doing shoes? That was no, that was it was before that. Yeah, hmm. so it was it was before that. But didn't Evil turn into Osiris? Yeah. Yes, it did. Okay, it okay. did. It was one of those conflict of interest things where people like you know evil. It was kind of like the shorties thing that we we're talking about. Uh, where yeah. they start off as hardware. Everybody's on the team to support the hardware, and sure. then they start boards, and then you're kind of indirectly kind of just supporting the whole program. Yeah, right. right. So I mean, yeah. So uh, to kind of wrap up that conversation is just basically, you know, for somebody that I kind of helped helped along quite a few times yeah you know to kind of have this happen it, it, it kind of sucked you know what i mean because right. even right. At, at one point it's like i was forming my own company and everybody skates and mm-hmm. um you know was kind of having little you know little issues where i'm like hey let me let me come in and design some fucking graphics or whatever sure. for the brand that i've fucking started and right right pretty much handed over to you and I, I, I couldn't as much as even get any design work. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about, dude? It's like I've, you know, I've done design work for this company, that company. Fucking, I've worked, I've done design work for NASCAR and stuff like that. But wow. I'm not good enough to design for a company that I Start, made, that right, I started. Right. That you, like, like what kind of fucking dude are you? Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So after after all that happened, I was just like, that's it. Yeah. Was that your last like? Uh, pro board that you had was on expedition was on expedition i mean yeah. other uh, other than that i had guest boards i had a guest board mm. for a uh, plan b plan b oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Sick. 
I mean, it just goes to show people, you know, doing business or starting up businesses. I mean, you got, you got to get things in writing, you know, you got to right. get the paperwork, you got to get everything right. Or stuff like this happens, you yeah. know? No, you're absolutely right. But at, the, but at the same time, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't expect it from the dude that you put in the you very know, position uh, you don't ex- that allowed them to, you know, uh, right. you know, uh, uh, I make mean, something you, of their lives because, you know, before sure. that, it's like he's... You know, he had the conversation like, oh, man, before this, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was selling records in my, my old record collection, whatever it is, to pay rent. And my right. mom, you know, so you're thinking, OK, you get it, dude. You're appreciative. You're going to, you know, I mean, yeah. you, you're a hard worker. Right. We're going to make something of this and we're all going to fucking celebrate one day. There you go. They right. get to the board, you know, they get to that point and they're, you know, he's celebrating without us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's wow. like. I mean, whatever. A little bit of a dark cloud, but I mean, you're doing about. fantastic, though, I man. Am. I am. There's, there's, hey, every, there's nothing for me to complain about. Yeah. I guess I, as a part of my history, and you guys wanted to know about it. You know, what I mean, I had sure. to kind of shed, shed some light because I mean, you know, people are familiar with me from yep. Expedition right. being one of the early founders, and there so that's go. a lot of the questions. That's a lot of the question that I get quite a bit. That I really just, for the most part, shy away from. Right. I don't even, yeah, I don't even engage in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's whose idea was all the smoke. All the smoke. That was um, my friend Dave Kinsey, who. Artist, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the artist. What's yeah, all yeah. the smoke, Raj? So the, when the, the early ads, like, <laughs> yeah. it was them in like a cloud of smoke. Oh, okay. But dude, it was but it was like it was eight pages of ads. Yeah, yeah. it was five pages. Oh each, yes. each, yeah, each each writer had a page, and it was me, Stefan, Shani, uh, Lambert, and uh, they had like a Stephane. smoke machine just blowing. Fire. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, Stefan Laurent's right. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Best yeah. dude, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Rad. Awesome. Rad. So Stephane, sick. Stefan, awesome guy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Miss you, Stefan. The whole team. I mean, the whole team. It was it was good times outside yeah. of you know. I mean, when I saw those ads, I was like. I want to skate with those guys. I want to. That's why I wanted to ride for exhibition. Oh, right it was all in all in the old videos I want to be a too. Dark room with yeah. smoke all around me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it looked cool though. But you watch them skate, and you're like, oh, dude, those guys, those guys know it, what's it up. It peaked a lot of people's interest. I mean, mm-hmm. anytime you know, at, at that stage in time, you're coming out, you yeah, know, you swinging, swinging with, five with, with, a, with a five page ad. It catches people's attention. Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? what the fuck like, is this? Right? Exactly. Yeah. So that, that must was, have cost a lot of money. It did. Yeah, <laughs> right. okay. but you know, but at that time, you know, it was money that we didn't have, but we were we were kind of leveraging our credibility. Sure, you know, what I mean, to kind of assure people that this was going to be something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we we were extending credit to be able to do because a even, lot of stuff even that at that time too, when new companies started out, like distributions maybe wouldn't even pick people up right. because they didn't know, hey, this company could be around in like just six months. Exactly. They that. could be co- here and gone tomorrow. Exactly. You that. know, so to establish that is yeah. super Trade important. It was a punctual know? statement yeah. 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 as a launch for sure, sure. That, that got a lot of people interested in what we're doing and kind of allow us to exist in that way. Yeah. Yeah. It was like one of the first big launches really. For a board brand, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There you go. No, we were, it, it, go. it definitely created quite a buzz and it, yeah. it allowed us to exist. It allowed us to be something. What, wait, 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 what was your, since you and you said you and Lambert created it, what, what was like the, the behind, like how did you come up with the name Expedition? So initially we didn't come up with the name Expedition. My friend, uh, Dave Kinsey came up with the name Expedition for something that he was going to do years before that never ended up happening. Mm. Oh. And so he had the name Expedition that he wasn't doing nothing with and the rad logo, which is still one of my favorite logos. Such a good logo. Ever. Mm. I, I actually I, put a sticker on my board just recently because I thought it was, I just love that yeah, logo. That's yeah, that's like one of my favorite logos of all time. But my, yeah. that's Dave Kinsey. He's the guy that, like, he's my favorite artist. He's been able to transition and evolve his art in so many cool different ways. That, that's my favorite favorite artist he's the actually he's the guy that designed the dc logo like oh not really many people know that what? oh wow doesn't get enough credit for that but crazy dave kinsey dude straight no way. awesome Damn. artist he was uh you know he was partners with uh shepherd ferry and mm. um and the uh agency uh black market agency that was kind of doing a lot of the uh creative um for expedition in those wow. early days but i i always tripped out too because you look at the a and w sign like you know the similar huh? it's very and, similar yeah. and i was like oh so yeah. i was like that's pretty cool oh, right. oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it looks really similar but there is different touches to it right. obviously for you know? sure. i'd yeah. like to get his opinion on uh what he thinks of our nine club logo you know i did that logo i'll ask him you know yeah yeah see what's up maybe you can have, <laughs> him. Yeah. Maybe you can have him on the show if he says something good tell me if he if he bashes it just you know, keep it to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the spacing is a little off, but yeah, it's good. It's spacing, Raj. Come on, bro. Guy doesn't like I anything. I think it looks over. fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Kelly. Yeah, God man. damn it. <laughs> Listen, bro, this has been a And you don't have to worry about anything over here except for everybody else skates. You know, that's oh, right. uh, it's coming soon. Hey. Let's let's, you know see, let's see what you got. Man. I got hey, listen. Every crop skates. For every crop skates. <laughs> wow. 
No, but seriously, dude, this has been. A, I'm so stoked for you with every. I hope that I hope you make a billion dollars off that shit. Oh, thanks, you know man. what I'm saying? More than yeah. that, dude. More than a billion? Yeah. Wow. You know, more than anything, I'm Trillion. having fun with that, and I just, hey. I'm just, you know, I do. I, I, I've got my hands on a whole bunch of little I'm, different projects that I just, you know, that that kind of. Uh, that I'm excited about it's great. and that I'm excited for the opportunity to have. I mean, everything from designing footwear still, which there is still go. a huge passion of mine and, you know, uh, creating art and skateboard graphics. I've uh, recently been doing some artwork for a, 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 a um, board company called 40 Skateboards. Oh. And it's awesome. It's like the concept behind it is, you know, it's a bunch of, you know, older, older dudes, okay. plus, 40, yeah. uh, plus 40 dudes that are, you know, that have like guest models and stuff. Oh, and, maybe uh, got, get Raj did, on the team. Yeah. It's you funny. Know, maybe, oh, that'd be maybe great. That. He, he, I, I randomly saw. Some, I'm 44 uh, right now. He's got some slappies, bro. <laughs> what, I still skate for chocolate, bro. Oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> you, you, but he's in the 40s. You're not even old enough. He is. Raj? Yeah, he is. No, he is. Are you really? <laughs> I'm 27. Oh, you age well. Lies. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank I you, saw bro. Uh, my homie posted a vi- uh, like a flyer of uh, the homies in Atlanta. It was like it was a four the forty the forty club. Yeah. And it was all forty and up club skate uh, session. And I was and it had the nine club logo. But at, it says forty club. Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, uh, we got a lot of cease and desist <laughs> to put out. Man. Yeah. Yeah. People are was, biting our shit. I thought Grant, that was Grant tight. Posted it, dude. I what do you mean? Correct. Joey Brzezinski just put out a board sixty nine club. Do you see that? Did it's actually? a board. Yeah, I'm sending him a cease and desist right away. It's all his Instagram like default. We need one for the wall at least. People biting our shit. Brzezinski's awesome. Wait till he starts ripping your shit off. Yeah. Yeah. See how awesome he is. He's, 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 actually, no, he's a supporter. He's, I'm he's, kidding. He's ordered. He's ordered some stuff. That's that's the red thing that's, about him. He actually supports. That's like, amazing. The industry. Sometimes yeah. we get orders from people that were like, "Dude, did you see? Tell me, uh, mm-hmm. order some stuff." Of Feels it's, good. it's amazing yeah. that yeah. people want to support, dude. Yeah, for sure. But listen, bro, this has been incredible, man. Like Alfonso it. Rawls, man. Listen, what size? Do you, can we can we give you some nine club stuff? Please do. Bro? Yeah. What, I'd what be size? If I didn't get some nine club, what stuff. size? What size do you wear? Dude? XL. XL. Oh, I think out. we do have some XL have stuff. Some XL I've been working yeah. out again. All right, I'll go have you? I'll yeah. I some. love that long sleeve you got. I mean, I'm you know, hey. Okay. Yeah. Go see where's the next one laying around. Kelly's gonna hey, go long grab long sleeves and uh, sweatshirts. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we're running yeah. low on some. You know what I mean? Like keeping inventory and doing the show. Like it's really difficult, man. It's a whole. Infant product is a whole game. No, it's a game. It it's such a crazy game. The crazy it thing is, is it, we'll run out of mediums right away. Or we'll yeah, run out of mediums large and yeah. But it's yeah. all across. It's it's never the same. But you never, yeah, you never know. Well, actually, the, you know what? Can I ask something real quick? Go ahead. No. Ha, go ahead, bro. Uh, well, actually, it's kind of cool because I get to judge uh, some contests with him, too. That's right. How did you start getting into the judging contest? Um, I forgot when that happened, but I'm really linked up with the guys at California Productions. And, uh, you know, Jeff Jewett calls me every once in a while and gets me involved. I think he actually he was the first one to call me and get involved with that. He just was appreciative that, you know, I was able to skate street and vert and had a clear understanding standing from my years and years of uh, of doing it that he thought I made yeah. a perfect fit and started there and... It just kind of increased, and it's it's. I, I just love to do it. You know, what I mean, yeah. it's it's, it's well, fun as heck to do. What you said earlier actually kind of made me la- like. I totally. When you said you were writing down your trick list, uh-huh. I'm like, when you judge, I'm like, I look over and you're like, you have every trick listed that they did. Right. And I'm like, I could totally that makes sense of why. Like you did that as a kid writing your name. Right. Like, and right. I see like, oh, okay, it's just kind of the same Steve's going on. Yeah. But. It's a. It, it's it's kind of a note. It's a, it's a totally. mental note. It kind of keeps me. You know, it, it allows me to keep track of what's going on and mm-hmm. who's doing what. I mean, yeah. I know I know most of the judges kind of don't. Because it, it, it kind of gets hectic, you know, things yeah. move so fast, you don't have time to really write the notes, but it kind of really helps me to kind of look back at their, the previous runs and kind of get, you know, I mean, at least if I have kind of rough, like I'll have like a little, it's kind of hard to write down every trick. And so you yeah. kind of abbreviations. abbreviations or, yeah. little, you know, little stars or whatever, you know what I mean? For like <laughs> tricks that are like, you know, the two stars versus five stars, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Everyone gets on their, in their own little rhythm, but. Yeah, I, lo- I love I love judging those contests. It's super yeah. fun. I have another random question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead Someone who's seen skating from the '80s on to now, what do you think is missing from skating today? I don't know. I mean, I could tell you what I do appreciate seeing is uh, more skate parks. I think that what that does is to help skateboarders be skateboarders as opposed to kind of just being defined as a street skater or transition skateboarder people are kind of getting more diversified yeah. and you're starting to see dudes be able to do 540 flip, in a flip line in, yeah flip yeah. in flip out of some shit yeah. and then you know 540s yeah you know uh, on vert um Who's who's the who's the Japanese kid? Yuto. Yuto. Yeah. One of my favorites right now. He's incredible. I can appreciate that like big time. The fact that you can 
rip as anything. hard on street and be so innovative, innovative and at the forefront of what he's doing on street and then just blow people's mind, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Being able to do the shit that he does on vert. And it's not like he's trying or going there to skate vert. He just shows up with no pads and is doing like <laughs> legitimately vert style looking 540s. On, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So you can look like a vert skater on vert and look like a street skater on street. Yeah. Blows my mind. Yeah. But that's, uh, the, you know, this, this, this new age of, of, of having, you know, the facilities in which to kind of do that. Is is awesome to see, and that's kind of mm-hmm. the the talent that it breeds. How many vert sure. ramps are in your area right now? How many vert ramps in my area right now? Um, Compared to like what they were back in the eighties. There's much more. There's two in right. Vista. The, what, there's, okay, there's Manchas and uh, Burnquests, and there's uh, Hawks Ramp, which is probably about ten or so miles away, which is probably about like two miles away from where the original uh, McGill's, McGill's Park was. One, yeah. um, and there's, uh, dude, there's tons of skate parks and vert ramps that I don't even know about. There's mm-hmm. just so, there's just they, so they, many they, skate they spots pop these up days. Like, yeah. like All of San Diego, I, I don't know, if I, had a, if I had to just kind of rough guess and throw an estimate on it, there's probably about a good 10 or 20 vert ramps at this point. Skate parks just pop up like weeds now. Like, yeah, every city it's, has at least yeah. a couple, a few of them. I know Vista has two, I mean, some people consider it one, but it's like, you know, the, the transition park is right here, and then two mm-hmm. blocks down is the street park, Oceanside. Where right. I grew up is three. Carlsbad has two. Mm-hmm. There's skate parks all over San Diego that I haven't even visited yet. Sure. There's like so many of them. It's so awesome to see because it's like, as an older dude, it's like, you know, when we started skateboarding back, like there was nowhere to fucking do it. Like yeah. I remember like driving like for hours to go skate a ledge or a bench that you might get a couple of hits on and then you're kicked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now it's like I'm driving, you know, past like ledges and spots that are just aren't even waxed anymore where we would have been like, <laughs> that shit would have been made of wax by this point. It would have been so much wax on it. And for sure. Yeah. All the little nooks and crannies that you see across town that we made, you know, we made skate spots. People don't even, you know, right. people don't even consider that now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, that's kind of good to see. I think that it's, 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 good for the sport mm-hmm. um and it's also good for like the core street skaters you know what yeah. I mean? to kind of give them a place in which to kind of fine-tune them skills mm-hmm. and go take it to the streets because i mean imagine imagine like skate uh, video parts back in the day where you had no place to go practice no three stair rail or five stair rail to go warm up before you go hit the big joint you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like you had like yeah. you know like like we were talking about the uh the 18 stair rail that i was skating i went from a four stair, you know, a uh, wood skate park rail sure. straight to that <laughs> because there was no option. It was you right. couldn't start, okay, I'm going to go to the, you know, this it's park six stair and, and then hit the, the, hit the stair, six yeah. and then hit the eight and then, right. and then I'll be ready to go, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, that's why you see in the levels of skateboarding oh. turn up to, it's, yeah. it's crazy now. Alf, let me show you something. <laughs> <laughs> take a look. At, take a look at this. Show you what take a look at. Out. Take a look at I've this. I've been waiting to get that. Take a look at this sticker, look at bro. That. As as Raj bashed on, earlier. Guys. Look at this. Look Let's, at this. Look at the spacing yeah. on that, bro. Now three. You know three letters on the top, four letters on the bottom. How else are you gonna space that, Alf? It looks nice to me. Thank you, bro. <laughs> See, Raj. It looks yeah. nice to From me. a professional designer here. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. I Listen, here's a uh, nine club switch flip Manny mug. Y'all made my day. That's just for uh, that's the reference for the uh, the um, everybody skates the, the wool embroidery? the embroidery that you're gonna do okay. for us. Oh, um, okay. Here's <laughs> a uh, which one? never <laughs> there happened. There you go. No, it'll happen, bro. Come on, you gotta be positive, Raj. XL okay. long sleeve. Oh, I've been, waiting, I've been waiting to get one of these guys. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you, man. Uh, We're hyped to have you. Oh, here's a XL oh, wow. gray. You Gray? You like gray? Absolutely. Okay. I here's an XL right gray hoodie. That. That's all we have in stock. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, yeah, man. I'm part of the fucking huh? club now. Hell yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro. I brought something for you guys as well. Did you? Oh. I'm going to shake your hand right now yeah. and after, too, <laughs> just because I already threw it out there. You brought some stuff for us. I absolutely did. I can't, you know, I'm not going to, sh- I'm not going to show up empty. Oh, come, come on. on. Just you being nine. here is great, bro. Not to the nine Clizzy. You know, hey man, thank you, bro. I brought a few things D- because I'm a generous dude. Wow. Well, you are. So I know. Oh, look at this, man. Crab, I know you rock these type of hats. I love but those I, hats. But you guys, you guys can kind of choose which ones you guys That's want. That's amazing, have, bro. 
I have this Look six at pal. That. What is this? Is this uh oh this is the the P Diddy hat. That's right. Yeah. He's pouring it up on a stack of money. Look at Bro, that. Listen, how did that <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where, how did they get that embroidery so small, dude? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you don't embroider these yourself, do you? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'd, have to, I'd, have to, I'd have to charge too much okay. for that if I did that. I mean, I'd lose my mind. Wow. But you know what? That. Before I be, before I give you these two hats, let me put it into more context. I got I got uh some shirts for you guys that's oh, probably gonna put oh. these embroideries into context. Well here. Here's this embroidery, right? <laughs> I love that. Who's right? that? That's somebody on a, on a stapler. On a stapler. Yeah. Have you seen oh, that? the office space. There yeah. you go. Yeah, right. space is on a stapler. That guy. <laughs> that guy. I'm, I'm a, sure. I'm going to burn the building okay, down. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you want this one. I or, or the white one. Or, there you go. So this one. Michael, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Boom. Raj is okay. a, yeah. I'll take that one for sure. Like that Daniel one's Vargas awesome. Finishing. There you okay. go. Raj is, yeah, there you go. He likes the white, man. Raj is a white guy. And so this... Actually goes well with this. Oh, this, this pairs well with this shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but oh, there you go. Oh, that's the the work. I'm yeah. Waiting. Wow, that's tight. That's so sick. <laughs> I mean, not my yeah. not my stapler. So that's a large for you guys. In my stapler. <laughs> I'm gonna burn the building down. Here's another sweatshirt. <laughs> no way. I like that. That's a good color. Ooh. Raj, that's a your that's, that's your totally color. Totally. I'll your totally color. the Smith one. Yeah. Smith grind. Yeah. Wow. Look at, that. look at that, Raj. So that's epic. that's you, Raj. Yeah, that, I'll rock that all day long. That's that, only, that only look good, but that's, let me feel that. that bro. That's cozy right let there. Me feel that's this a, fabric. That's a comfy piece. What yeah. is that mint? Oh, yeah, that's like a that's good, uh, sea moss. Um, what else do we have? What else do we got here, bro? Ooh, is that yeah. salmon? Is that salmon or is that red? <laughs> is that a, yeah, it's kind of a uh, kind of a mix in between. Both. I, call it, I call it Playboy pink. Playboy. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Look at that polo. Yeah. Man, backside flip. That's, that's is that what it is? Amazing, bro. So I mean, it's one of those things where it's like we, you know, we all grew up, grew up, and we're familiar with the polo logo. Oh yeah, and right, right. We, 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 each one of us has probably had a shirt or a hat, whatever. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever played polo? No. 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 Right? If I had the money, right. I would. I've been on a horse. Right. Never done polo. Raj so <laughs> ride around on a horse with a stick. <laughs> so the, the idea behind this was to. You know, because I'm, I'm a, a big polo fan as well, but I think that this kind of really plays into the, uh, the, uh, what you know, what what people are more familiar with. You know what I mean? Like the, the uh, it's kind of like an homage to yeah, like the it's, '90s it's, and the polo, right? Is that a, yeah, exactly that. So it, it's it's just it's meant to look like a big embroidery, but it's a screen print. I mm -hmm. love it. Or a direct to garment. Do they really mm -hmm. tie their tails like that? Yeah, they do. Do they? Do they? Yep. That's weird. I yeah I, I seen I seen something from them that actually looked pretty close. Okay. So oh no, here's there's yeah there's there's not too many of these floating around but uh wow you guys have one though. oh Look wow at that. Michael that Jackson sick. yeah boom Look, I the, feel like Kenny Anderson needs to be wearing that I know. Look at the expression in his face. <laughs> he is you know, just that it looks like it, it's he's yeah feeling himself yeah mm -hmm. so that's what I do I bring smiles man to that's, look at that's this that's what everybody skates does thank you bro. everybody skates .com I like your uh... or everybody skates on Instagram mm -hmm. check us out man or yeah. hashtag everybody skates hashtag everybody skates there you <laughs> damn go. you got an RN number and everything huh? okay <laughs> look at this Smith, Smith, much? Smith Ryan <laughs> Dude, you really Dude, brought some gifts. I know. Thank you. I can't, hey, man. What else you got? Hey, I can't have I you I feel guys. like <laughs> shit just giving you a lousy yeah. fucking hoodie and a long oh, Kelly, go grab him good. some more stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 we're Jesus all good. Christ. We're all good. Okay. I, I brought some school clothes for you guys. So you guys school, feel yeah. like school clothes. You guys <laughs> it is, yeah. popping, popping tags oh, in the first day Oh, and the Muhammad Ali, man. There you go. Alf, man, let me tell you something, bro. Like, we're going to have to be fighting over all this shit. You know what I'm saying? You know how much Kelly, the, they, like, love. He's a skate product whore. Yeah. Is it's Roger? Are you going to put that over your headphones? Don't worry about it. This is, <laughs> is this Roger a large? Has many Are colors. these larges? Yep. They're oh, all man, large. You know. Yeah, I, I called Kelly and asked what size you guys were. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, perfect. I like colors. Roger has purple, sea moss, and orange. Look at that. I can rock this shit. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's That's tight. Soft. It looks very nice. Very soft. I Thanks. like it. You gonna sleep in that tonight, Rush? It's a good chance of that. Yeah. You, you better do some. Out. You better it's some cold backside cold. Smith grinds with that thing. Look, there you go. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's this. Hard, it's hard to do a backsmith on a curb. I love the the st stapler. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah. So that was uh. That's when I was doing them with the uh, Prisma car colors and the uh, mm -hmm. and the um color pencils. Oh, that's yeah. That is a draw. Yeah. And it's my stapler. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite movies, by it's the way. It's so good. Yeah. It's, it's so such good. an awesome what movie. What was his name it's, again? Um, 
What was it? Stanley? No. Kelly's Googling it right uh, now. Well, his real name is Stephen Root. Uh, Does it say Milton? Cast? Milton. Milton. Yeah. Yeah. Milton. Yeah. Milton. How could I forget that? Yeah. It's Milton. Yeah. <laughs> he won at the end of the movie. He won. Yeah. Sorry, sure spoiler did. alert. If anybody's <laughs> gonna, you, know, you spoiled the movie. It's fucking t- t- twenty years old. This yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, go check out Office Space. It's, it's great. funny. It, it's, it, it's, a, it's a funny. Watch movie. it over and over again. Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a classic. Thank you, bro. No I, problem. I, Thank I, you guys. I actually feel like shit. Just give it. Oh, two. quit it. Quit oh, you know what? After the show, you can raid. We'll take you to the warehouse, man. You could have anything you want, bro. I, yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Me, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, we got candles I, back there and everything. Oh, we got every kind, all kinds I'll of stuff, it, bro. for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Listen, Alfonso. Gotta get my three wick. All right. You're the man, dude. Thank you so Thank much. You and, so like, much. you no know problem, what, guys. dude? Much success. Yeah, Elf. Everything you do, bro. Thanks, this man. Is, I appreciate that. I, like guys, I said, I hope. You guys, too. You guys are on your way to do big things. I'm certain of it. You guys are already, like, killing it. You guys make every Monday something to look forward to so thank you guys i appreciate thank that hey, i appreciate that i don't i do not miss an episode so. thank you wow yeah, it's it's a trip being in here because even somebody you're not interested for interested in oh it's you, just, got, it's, you guys i'm interested in you guys hey, so regardless of whoever's in here more it's like, thank it's, you yeah, yeah. thank you guys, you you guys are awesome no but thank you bro this you got is it. amazing no Dude, problem this is great thank you for what did you bring for kelly <laughs> <laughs>